Bad. They're not alive. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Encounter Roleplay. My name is Will. I'm a DD sex icon. I'm back today doing it live with another episode of City of Mr. Lux per sequence. And in fact, this is a very important episode because it is our finale today, my friends. So let's go into Gus and crew. Let's figure out who we are and who we're playing. Let's start with Metamancer, our MC for tonight. Meta, how's it going? Hi, it's going well. Thanks. I'm very excited for today's episode. I sent a little teaser preview and a blurred image to them this morning to prepare themselves. So I'm very excited to see how everything unravels. Uh, nothing like getting the anticipation going in advance, right? Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, well, of course, we also have some players of us ready to die on our tonight's finale. We have Scrat with us tonight. Scrat, how's it going, my friend? Oh, it's going so well, Will. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very nervous about tonight. My character is uh, one crack away from becoming an avatar, and it entirely depends on his relationship with uh, Officer. Gib well, the 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 character previously known as Officer Gibbs. Um, just mm -hmm. Gibbs now. <laughs> yeah, just Gibbs. Yeah, it just yeah. It feels it feels dirty it's in Shaw's now. mouth just saying Gibbs. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Even on my character card, it always calls you Officer Gibbs. Anyway, that's oh. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, amazing. Uh, of course, it wouldn't be City of Mist if we didn't have Tommy with us. Tommy, how's it going, my friend? Oh boy, caught me there. Caught me there drinking. Um, it is going. I am super, super anxious about this last episode. Scrat, you should come join the mythic side, I guess. It's not really exactly dark side, but kind of dark. It's kind of dark over here. Dark and brooding is what I would say it is. Join the dark side of the avatars. Um, if, if it's not we have, dark yet. We have tacos. We have tacos. <laughs> um, but yes, I play uh, Shi Yu, um, currently in his avatar tar form, uh, who we're just going to call Hal. Um, and uh, yeah, he, he, he is the guardian of the, uh, the fields of Su Chun, which are the... the the sort of between life and death fields. So uh, someone's fucking around in the flower garden. He's got to throw them out. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Of course, we have Anna with us tonight. Anna, how's it going? Hello, it's going. My name is Anna. I play Lena Ridley here on the Encounter Roleplay channel on Twitch, which where you're at right now. How awkward can I make this? Um, <laughs> yeah, she is basically the more responsible one of the group kind of and uh i don't know what's gonna happen today because it feels uh, i don't know it's after meta sent that preview with all the crazy stuff i'm like hmm all right i see you i see you <laughs> amazing awesome uh and <laughs> of course we have sheepy with a snipe sheepy has a girl my friend Hey there, guys. I'm Sheepdog. I play Jack Fantastic, although more accurately, I play the avatar form, uh, Johann Faust, who has been searching for the demon Mephistopheles. Pretty sure he just found him. And yeah, Faust has been, ever since Faust came out, he's been a hair's breadth away from betraying the entire party the whole time. So this should be interesting. Interesting is one way to put it. Uh, as for myself, I'll be playing uh, Russell Gibbs, no longer Officer Gibbs, as Scrap mentioned. Uh, he has fallen off the uh, the police bandwagon, and he's having a tough time of it right now. He's going to try and, and, and make his way through and uh, get through this finale, but it will not be with his uh, police badge in hand. Uh, but before we dive into today's finale, I remind you guys, of course, we're here because of City of Mist. City of Mist are on Kickstarter right now with the Knights of Pain Town, which is on like $115,000 uh, right now. It's doing fucking crazy. We did a couple of premieres here on Encounter Roleplay, and it's been amazing fun. So definitely go and check them out, and they're sponsoring tonight's show. And of course, we're sponsored tonight by both FantasyGrounds.com, our virtual tabletop of choice, and of course, WaylandGames.co.uk, our go-to destination for tabletop role-playing games and wargaming miniatures. Definitely go and check those guys out. Of course, you guys can interact with tonight's show if you haven't yet by following, retweeting, and donating. You guys uh, can screw with the party as we go throughout today's game. So 
Uh, good players, net ones, net twenties, wild magic surges, and worse. But let's get into it, my friends. This is what we've been waiting weeks and weeks for, the finale of the Larkspur sequence. So, Meta, please do take it away. All right. So, quick recap before we dive right in. Last week, uh, the party faced off against the Rift of Poison Ivy. You guys got it right. Um, and so, with that said, what happened as Lena stopped time momentarily to free Shiyu from the entrapment that she had set across the party, uh, allowing them both to make an attack against her to kind of help the rest of the group really get out of the situation that they were in. Lena displaying a significant power of her raven form of shadow, essentially pushing back um, the, the, um, the woman into the ground, but the force shaking the rest of the party as they kind of scatter. Uh, on the recovery side of things, Dr. Shaw found a very strange moment where he was between spaces emerging on the other side with a sword of Athens. And so he wielded it, it to essentially behead one poison ivy at the very end of that scene, but not before she you unleashed his full power became an avatar and took the greenhouse down, exploding the windows outward and completely destroying the foliage flowers and garden within. As the rain started to pour down, the group kind of stood uh, and viewed what happened, realizing still that Faust had just also killed Faust, uh, Rosenberg and they were both nowhere to be seen because all of a sudden, Pedro, our fantastic demon stomach friend, was being transplanted into Rosenberg's body, where he settled very nicely and suggested everyone go get some tacos. On their way over, Gibbs and she both had visions of the future, maybe, as they see a figure standing uh, at a skyscraper overlooking the entire city as each citizen is shown falling asleep and when they finally arrive after having a little bit of downtime and montages at this tower uh, they get to the top and they are faced with five people one that they recognize or at least Gibbs and Shiyu do from their visions standing in the middle as sand begins to form around and creating four additional circles as four of those figures emerge. And we'll go into those descriptions one more time, just as a refresher, so and, and directly jump into the narrative from there. So the first person that we see, Lena, finds that moment where she recognizes, she feels the presence of this individual. And Gibbs and Faust actually do recall that this is the same individual who they had previously followed through uh, the the hallways that brought people across the different areas of town. And so he stands there kind of ready. No physical face yet present. It's still obstructed the same way it was before. And there is an obvious mist or fog-like aspect to the form. Uh, next to him is standing yet another figure that kind of calls to... Dr. Shaw, the power that emits there, sounds and seems very familiar, almost like an echo from a past that he doesn't quite remember. And this, the face is familiar to him, but it's not quite lit up enough to really make it out. Next to that area is another familiar figure, though much more towering compared to last time one Mephistopheles, the same demon that you all encountered when Jack and the pawnbroker, the shapeshifter, showed you guys exactly what he looks like. And then, of course, the final form that takes place. At inherent look, it doesn't seem like much, but everyone who saw him before recognizes him as Sung Ho. 
she used brother. And that is where we are as these four individuals face you, the other one still facing towards the city, not even acknowledging your presence. Perhaps arrogance, perhaps not. And so that is where we are. Um, the the sunshine that was coming through before has suddenly begun to turn away as clouds roll in, almost like it's accepting and realizing what's about to happen, like the environment is preparing for whatever will come. And the individuals within each of these sand circles, one steps forward and looks directly at Shaw. And now that he's kind of stepped forward more towards you, you realize you know exactly who this is. He says to you, Shaw, did you really think you were the only person to survive from the 43rd? Do you remember me and how you left me to die? You, the, you the person you recognize is Tom Klaus. You can't be. If anyone else could have survived that, it would have been Jerry or Ben, one of the... one of... one of the higher-ups. Not, not, not you, Tom. You can't be. Well, sometimes we don't realize what we're capable of until our life hangs in the very balance. But you made your decision back then. Yes, I lived, and it appears so did you. If it really is. What saved me wasn't something that saves most people. A strength that I found that I wasn't aware I had, much like yourself. Does he look, like, scarred or anything like that, or...? He looks completely untouched. He actually... The last time you remember seeing him, he felt a little bit more scrawny. Not as... strong-looking. He looks more confident now. And there's a faint aura of a lion kind of around him, but it's not... It's not a live lion. It's almost like a protective shield around him. As he kind of steps forward once more. Shaw will reach out with his hand to touch his face, like, y you can't have survived in this in this manner. I I am covered in scars, head to foot. I had burns, severe burns. It was an inferno. You, you are an illusion. You are uh, an imposter. Doc, you know this guy? I served with him in the army, Gibbs. Once. Okay. Ah, uh, what's y your brother doing here, Shiyu? I am not Shiyu. <laughs> your um, your your brother is standing there, and yeah, I do, I do he... think. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I do think that um, Avatar Shiyu Hal uh, turns looks. I am quite curious about you, though. You claim to not know what's going on, and yet here you are. There was moments where I could not reveal things. The time wasn't quite right. But here you are, just as he predicted. Just as who predicted? The man that's responsible for everything. Hmm. If I recall... The sand. The sand man. Seems like that's what you're calling him, yes. 
Son well, of a bitch. If you seek to stand between me and him, regardless of whatever feeling she you may have had for you. Don't get Yeah, also way. for the record, fuck you, buddy. Fuck you. I hold no ties to you. I will remove you if you get in my way. We're fully prepared for your resistance, but you should probably hear what we have to say before we decide to destroy each other, just in case you see the error of your ways. All right, so you guys are the fucking Illuminati. Why don't you reveal to us your grandiose secrets about why you kill people? And then we can decide if we want to kill you. Seems reasonable. She, you knew this, and I think you do too, Hal. The city can't be saved without the return to its origins. We, we know that this land is corrupted just like the people within it are. And you should know better, better than anyone since you're the one who can see their souls. They're all damned. We're here to save them. Maybe they are. So that means killing us? Well, you are valuable, but if you stand in the way of us, of course, we don't really have another choice, do we? And that means killing innocent people that are... They don't really... Not necessarily Why are you doing this? You say the city is... It has to be this way. Uh, what's the point? What do you guys get out of this? What? The people I guess in the city aren't scared. They should be scared. They don't even know. It's like they fall asleep and they just live in the dream. Whatever their dream might be. Whatever they desire, that is their life. They live in that place in between. Between life and between death. There are others in the city who don't agree with us, who have tried to stop us. And even... Even you all don't seem to fully grasp how important this work is. Of course, we had to see what you would be doing with the information you were given and unfortunately hopper was also a little bit of a monkey in the rent uh wrench you know that whole thing but um it's okay she took care of herself for us don't bring the foo fighters into this the what gibbs just give me a fresh pot. <laughs> is the is the Sandman in this room right now? Yeah, he's just looking out the window. He's like he's standing in this very. He's a very tall, slender man. Let me describe him a little bit more. Um, even though the sand is kind of obstructing him, it's almost like just like the you know the particle effect of something kind of disintegrating then coming back together. It's kind of like that around him but his body and his form is still mm -hmm. there as he's just kind of looking outward on the city, almost as if he's either concentrating or taking in the sights. You can't really tell since his face is away from you, but he seems comfortable. Like his body language is very relaxed, um, very like confident in, in what way? Uh, you know that that scene that happens, no spoilers. <laughs> Oh, I hope you've seen the latest one. Yeah, sort of, but more like fine grains of sand. Okay. They're almost golden in color. I think Sorry. Cal turned. There were so many Avengers, figure. so I was like, wait, which one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all good. I think Hal um, sort of addresses okay. that figure. Oh, go ahead. Um, I would just say to them, but why us? Why me? I, I'm just a normal person that likes to make coffee. I don't know why I'm involved in this. Uh, the person to I the far right. The weird figure. Yeah, mm -hmm. the one that kind of speaks to you, essentially just being there, kind of steps forward. And this is the first time that you really, all of you hear him. 
uh, even though Gibbs and, and, and Jack at the time were there, he didn't really disclose any information that was intelligible. Um, and he speaks and the initial voice that comes forth is, is booming. It's almost, it's close to an echo when he speaks, even though the room is full. Um, and it has this kind of deep undertone. Um, it's hard to describe. It's not like a, a, a wet tone, but it's, it's very deep and it has that kind of long drawn out sound after he's done speaking. Um, he says, well, we're here because each of you has something to do with us and we were chosen, not you. So what does that mean? Why can't do you need us for something? And Lena is very confused by all this. Like she doesn't want to be involved seems that you don't remember who you are. Who you really are. What do you mean? You're holding on to this human form like it's some kind of shield protecting you when it's the other way around. You're limiting yourself. Wait, wait, wait. Are you the guy who uh, turned up and murdered a guy in front of Lena? Just, just so we're clear. That was the beginning. Cool. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. That's strike one. Okay. Was I supposed to see that death? Yes. You and I, as well as several others, have a connection that can't be severed. Go on. Okay. Then what? What about me? Is there some master plan behind? All this for me? Well, at first, we thought that you would be useful in the way of manipulation, but given your abilities, you'd be much more valuable to us, especially the boss, if you decided to lend your abilities to the cause. And, and the, remind me of the cause to purify this world, this city. Right, purify in a... What we, were we, we talking here? Like, let's put in air filtration systems or like, let's genocide everyone who's not like us. No, not Somewhere just us. But the ones who are like us grant an immense amount of power that would allow us to do just that. You know that there's a lot of things out there that are unexplained. Right. Like. Well, wouldn't it be better if we didn't have to hide behind it? I you don't know. A resplendent offering. <laughs> it's three for there, three for Russell, three for Lena, one for sure, one for Jack. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that's Are they wild magic surges? Yes. <sighs> God damn it, guys. Oh, you know okay. they are. <laughs> Those rolls in. I'm glad to be spared. Thank you, Izzy. <laughs> I think he you fucked with you feel enough. Bad That's why he's not. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> well, he's had about 10 million wild magic searches in his, in his career. Uh, all right, I'll look these ones up for Russell, first of all. Uh, myself and the next person I attack both lose 2d8 hit points. Okay. Mm. Um... Let's see how that's going to translate properly to this. <laughs> this one's my favorite. I find a pouch containing 1d10 super intelligent mice. I find six super intelligent mice. <laughs> super fucking intelligent. And I immediately Wait. get eaten by Jack snakes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the next person to who I speak acquires a phony language. Interesting. Acquires a phony language? Okay, yeah. okay. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, um, what did you guys get here? I just realized I'm in the totally wrong fancy grounds. Yeah, Probably are you in the wrong? Because I didn't see your rolls. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, okay, if you can post them in the, the chat, I'll um, 
I like him out there. I think we're in the unicorn one. Yeah, the unicorn one, the best one. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the um, <laughs> I'm not seeing people's right, who... names, so if you're typing, you need to say. Yeah, ah. put your name next to it, would be great. So, 957, who got that one? Uh, me. Cool. Uh, you no, sorry, 957 was Jack. No, yeah, Jack. I, I got 957. No worries. Jack forgets everything he knows about etiquette. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's not a furry for him. So. <laughs> okay. So just be himself? Yeah, but more probably. extreme, I think. Just, yeah, probably. Right. Uh, Dr. Shaw thinks that his allies will be all, will all be dead before morning. Oh, well, that's, oh, that's accurate. <laughs> oh, oh, that's accurate. What? oh, no. Oh, damn. We're all going to be oh, dead. Shit. Uh, oh, let's see. Fuck. So, I hope three that's not a Felina. We've still got three Felina uh, to I get. Got five, four, two, four, which is target can't be stunned by any blow to the head. And five four. Hey, that's three. good. Yeah. Uh, target can't create or use magical fire except while indoors. All right. Oh. And six eight six four. Six eight six four. Target will gouge out his eyes unless he's retained, retrained. Or attacked. Restrained, maybe. Restrained. Restrained. Oh, okay, that the things are very small. I don't have glasses. W words are hard, man. Words are hard. Words are hard. Feels feels bad, man. Okay. All right. Well, I want to find my mice. In all honesty, I just okay. all I care about right now oh, is my. That's all you care about. <laughs> That's why, that's why I'm here right now. <laughs> Let's get me in the game, to be honest. Um, I know why okay, you're so... here, but where are my mice? <laughs> <laughs> How do the mice come into this? I don't understand. <laughs> uh, hold on, I'm oh, finishing. Right. Welcome um, to do the you guys want to do... Would you like your mice? <laughs> you want to do the 2d8 uh, roll this. for me? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah okay. So what we're gonna apply that to is gonna be um, a reduction in status. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna split and round down. So um, we're gonna put it to four for okay. each of you. You can negate four. Uh, you will each get a status of four. Um, okay. uh, and then um, if you whoever you attack, you and that person will will have that happen. So. Um, just to make it a little bit more sensical to the mechanics of the game. Um, especially since there's, you can't have eight HP that doesn't exist in the game, so. Um, okay, cool. So with that said, uh, let's do, where were we before this? Uh, we're talking about the purification. Man, this, this whole, thanks, you guys Has flew us off. Or resplendent oh my god. Damn it. <laughs> and that's what now? Lena Vecna. The 30 pound donation, Mage Hand Press, gives Lena a magic watch. Oh shit, that can rewind time. 15 seconds, oh, once god. an hour. Oh. Pedro is blessed with a churro of courage. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fantastic. Yes. Gibbs is offered an uh, officer's badge of redemption should he choose that path. Oh. They're offering me the dark side with my new police badge. You could be a sheriff. Okay, this is... Hold on. Churro uh, courage for Pedro. Lena has a rewinding time watch. Time rewind. I get the feeling that... that 15 um, seconds per hour. What was that? Oh, I get the feeling that it's it's, it's just going to be Rosenberg's watch, like, suddenly just misfiring for some reason. <laughs> Probably. I don't think she yeah. left it. I don't think she left it behind, did you? Uh, no, I think it probably pocketed. Pocketed. Yeah. 
So that will be the watch that is relevant in this case. Um, Thank you for the watch. And also, reminder of last time, Pedro also has uh, morality because of tacos. Thanks again, yeah. Maychant. And also, <laughs> what was it? You guys have an endless supply of water or some shit like that? What was it? Yeah, yeah, endless decanter. Yeah. And I've got yeah. a, a cooling ice cube that can help me out with Treat my balance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That, that, uh, okay, and then water. No, I no, don't know what you're gonna do with the water yet, but that's intriguing. Um, okay. Resuming scene. So, serious face. Um, okay. Is that even possible? Um, <laughs> with this so he's game, talking about the purification know. of people, I think, was the last thing we... Yeah. Yeah, so... On. Let's just pick up with, um... If you have other questions to ask this person, it's, um... He hasn't right. identified himself, but the, the one that you guys remember. And when he's speaking, because he doesn't seem to have a face, it's very strange. It's just, like, you can feel the voice coming from him, but his... He doesn't have any face, really, so it's very strange. It's almost like a unease just looking at him that way. Yeah. Now this is, this isn't the sand. Is this the Sandman or is this Lena's person saying this? Lena's person. Lena's person. Okay. Yeah. Lena's shadow. Okay. So we've just, you know, purification in your terms is finding people who are powerful like ourselves in order to genocide mm -hmm. groups of people so that you guys can rule supreme. That's a very unelegant way to put that. I, I'm a very unelegant man. He really is. Well, yeah, I mean, you have done some dealings with not so stand up people, Mr. Gibbs. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I mean, I work with these guys after all, and, you know, I'm no longer a police officer, so something's gone wrong, you know, somewhere along here. I speak with Pedro what about often before that? about it. Yeah, yeah interesting but nothing, no, nothing's been, you know, nothing's been that genocide groups of people. That's, you know, you, you guys are at a 10 right now. You know, maybe I'm on a two or a three. Possibly a four. I let a woman's head get cut off. Well, you just weren't thinking big enough. Right. So so tell me tell me the master plan. How, how does it go? We join you and we find other people who are like-minded individuals who would like to be all powerful. We now join this... you, this big Illuminati group, and we go through the city, first of all, and then everywhere else, presumably. And we get rid of people not like us. Think about it, um, Gibbs. We could, we could help them rule through fear. Think of the motivation that people would have. Everyone knows that technology, medicine, all of these things... They all develop so fast during wars and times of strife. If we were to force the hand, think of how much our powers and other powers could develop. This could be the start oh. of a new, a new generation, a new, a new race, the next step at stage of evolution. Okay, Anakin Skywalker. Let's let's tone this one. Let's tone this one down for a second, shall we? Uh. You're sounding real crazy right now, Shaw. Just, just want to check in with you right now. How you doing? I don't think you're going to survive through this, Gibbs. I, that's questionable. Whether or not I, I even want to right now. So, uh, the the man that you recognize as Tom steps more towards you and says. Seems like maybe you can understand the value that we bring to the city. Fear is a powerful motivator. It is. Power is a powerful motivator. Yeah, take it or leave it. You guys want to kiss? With an infinite supply of power, Something. you could have whatever fear you needed to. 
whatever terror you wanted to provide. You intend to kill my my companions. If they cannot be persuaded, I don't see another way of moving forward. And they're Full just going to get in our way. I may have done some bad things. We may all have all done some questionable things to get here. God knows she who has and Jackass. I mean, th those guys are fucking crazy. But I would rather die than be part of something that sounds fucking crazy and evil. Like actual evil. Like actual demons and hell and let's rule over everyone with fear ha 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 with our red lightsabers kind of thing i mean that's but that's not really my deal gibbs i i thought we were friends <laughs> yeah we are friends buddy i'm getting mixed signals yeah well i'm getting the sense that you want to join the fucking crazy guys who've been murdering everyone this whole time I don't know what I want to do right now, but I fear for all of your lives if you don't go along. Well, you know, these guys are clearly up for a fight. Maybe we'll die or get hurt, but, uh, you know, sometimes standing up for the right thing is, is more important than looking out for yourself. You back there, Mr. Sandman ringleader as you're saying that he speaks up mr gibbs he doesn't turn around he's still looking out the window if the world could no longer feel pain and suffering would you design it that way no fear no end just bliss I no I don't think I would I think that those things fear and hatred and I've seen the worst in people jealousy and greed those things define us just as much as the good things do about us and ultimately if uh, humanity may not be the greatest thing or some of the greatest people around in this city i mean just look at look at us but if you don't even give them a choice to uh to make mistakes and do things wrong then that's it's not really life is it well it's just existing. would you like to ask your wife and your daughters What the hell are you talking about? Well, they could feel pain and suffering, or they could sleep instead and enjoy the living in their conscious minds in a place that is happy and free of fear. Piece of shit. Would you then redesign it? If you have touched a single hair on any of them, I swear to God. And to <sighs> answer your question, no. They probably dream that you're around more Gibbs. <sighs> yeah, I bet they do. But you know, just because you think it would be great because no one would feel anything. That's not true. Imagine all the things you would never feel. You'd never feel love or friendship or kinship. You'd never enjoy anything. Sure, well, of like they would. Shit, right? Life's fucking bad. I mean, like, you know, you go to Lena's place, you get some shit coffee, and then you, you go to... <clears throat> it was just one time, Lena. And then... <laughs> You run around for 72 hours trying to find some fucking bad guys just to do something right. 
but just to be stuck with uh, with only the good, that's no life, man. The bad makes the good feel mm. good, right? Not good we, with words. Maybe. Well maybe. said. I think <sighs> Shaw might have got his last crack through this conversation. I am looking forward to that. Um, why don't you do me a favor? I would like for you to do a flashback, if you don't mind, to the last time you were in that battlefield as you were kind of saving yourself. And instead of the people that were around you back then, the 43rd, imagine them as the people who are here with you instead. And kind of play out that narration for me as Shaw. Certainly. Uh, it's a strange memory. It doesn't start happily. He hardly remembers driving along in the vehicle, the medical unit, safe from most attacks, uh, thanks to the Geneva Convention. The memory starts with the explosion as they are hit by a mortar. Or at least somewhere up ahead is. Uh, and I guess blackness for a moment. When Shaw comes around, he's lying in the mud. Uh, his uniform is still burning. Uh, he's got lacerations from shrapnel and other such all over his body. Um, he looks up and he can see around him, I think first Gibbs, who would be taking the place of Jerry, the one that Shaw looked up to most at the time. Uh, Gibbs has a large chunk of metal through his middle. He screams in pain as his innards spill out on the ground. It's the first time Shaw had to ignore an injury. He knew that he wouldn't be able to save Gibbs. He looks at his own body. He has wounds, but he can heal these as long as he gets to them quickly. Uh, he begins to crawl through the mud, sliding um, amongst wreckage, cutting his skin occasionally in uniform on the wreckage on the ground and the stones. He sees Lena next. Uh, Lena is Lena is dead. Uh, her head looks as though it's hit a rock and completely just caved in. Um, She's bloody, wearing an army uniform, um, which looks surprisingly pristine amidst the carnage. Um, he crawls further on, and he sees a head, see you, uh, laying against a rock with a um, with a medicine uh, first aid kit, a full surgeon's kit in his lap. He has to crawl past Jack to get there. Jack is... Jack's legs are missing. He reaches towards Shaw for help, but Shaw ignores him and just crawls on past. Uh, when he gets to see you, who takes the position of Tom. Tom Klaus used to carry the, med the medical kits around for everyone. Um... CU looks salvageable. So CU looks like you can, you could be saved. And Shaw has to make a choice. Does he save? Does he use the medical equipment to save CU, or does he use the medical equipment to save himself? And whilst CU begs him for help, he props himself up and begins operating on his own body removing shrapnel, using up all of the 
Um, using all of the sterilizing agents, all of the bandages for himself. Stabilizing himself and hiding in the wreckage until he is saved. He leaves his entire team to die. Okay. As you come back from that moment where you have this flashback, uh, feel free to to tell us what it looks like as you shed the last bit of humanity, seeing what you saw, and allowing yourself to embrace the avatar within. I think the entire room is going to plunge into darkness as the figure who used to be sure is not entirely of this plane. Um, he moves through shadows. He talks through actions and listens through fears. And the first thing that he would want to do from the shadows is hone in on everyone's fears, try and read all their minds. Okay, good. Let's do, um, for a, um, Xiu and Faust, I'm sorry, Hal and Faust, you cannot, uh, as they don't need to face danger, you don't get a read on them. Um, mm -hmm. Lena and Gibbs, if you guys want to describe to mm -hmm. some discretion what kind of fear is immediately present in your minds in this particular moment, um, mm -hmm. feel free. Okay. Either one of you can um, and, uh, and real quick, there is a Wild Magic Surge for the Sandman, one of your choice meta and a viewer decision. So we can handle that as soon as whenever you want to. Um, okay, cool. And you guys can face danger right now if you'd like to protect yourself psychologically. You know, I don't think he's like in a place where he's like able to. I think he's like super easily read. Uh, okay. Particularly by sure right now. Um, okay. So Gibbs's fears are, are for his family first and foremost. He's super worried that the Sandman's brought them up, and he's also worried that Shaw's going to turn and he's going to have to like die on a hill <laughs> fighting uh, Shaw and these guys. Um, because he's been like struggling to find what is right and his like motivation now that the um uh, he's lost his position and like that his moral compass is sort of swaying um but he's <laughs> he's like almost relieved to hear that these guys are like honestly we just want to like fucking genocide people on like something that is clearly wrong uh and gibbs was worried that he wasn't going to be able to find that distinction, but now he's uh, more concrete in in his convictions. Yeah, Lena is definitely scared to know that the person she thought she was is an imposter, basically. And that she's gonna have to kill innocent people if she were to be persuaded for whatever reason um and basically not have a normal life anymore yeah uh also i rolled for the sandman for you meta. uh <laughs> caster's kidneys vanish <laughs> sandman <laughs> has no sand kidneys good thing he doesn't need them <laughs> yeah, folks. it's the death we win let's go home <laughs> everything's <laughs> good <laughs> Thanks for watching. Does he just have uh, like a dialysis? Like sand machine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's amazing. He's me. I can't give away all the information. Okay. Um, so the other one was that um, Caster is nearly paralyzed by fear while his spell book is open. So that's the one I can choose who that goes to. Right, yeah. Um, let's go with Faust. If you open a book, you done fucked up, okay? Don't open books. <laughs> the Call of Cthulhu rule. <laughs> Never open the book. 
<laughs> Don't ever read from the book. <laughs> Only because Faust is most likely to actually look at a book. That's why I'm giving him that magic sword. So, okay. So, um, now, okay, you have this, um, wait, Lena, did you? Yeah, you did. You just did it. Sorry. My brain just yeah. stopped for a second. Um, okay. So you know this now. Um, what is, what are we going to call you as your avatar? Are you going to introduce yourself or are you just going to lurk right now? Uh, I think that the form of Dr. Shaw just sort of fades into a tumble of shadows and I, I just lurk. I'll okay. be doing a lot of things in the subconscious. Sure. Um, so with that said, um, you all look on, you know, maybe peripheral vision wise, since you're still kind of focused on the people in front of you and, and Shaw's just gone. Um, the, the room has now darkened completely and reflective of the changes outside as well as the now just cloudiness has turned into uh, a storm and it is uh, you can hear the rain beating against the glass of the building um and the rumbling of thunder begins and the sandman finally turns around and he he is surprisingly what's the word it's he's surprisingly like calm even though he sees that there are things happening and he, well he hears that these things are happening and there's like this split between people who are considering what they're saying and then you guys basically threatening to stop them at all costs um he just looks onward and over to mephistopheles and he kind of just it's almost like a shrug like a kind of go there kind of moving towards him uh and when he does that the this demon kind of as as it's stepping away from where the rest of them are towards you faust he he looks at even though as as like lumbering and demonic as he looks there is a faint look of regret or maybe pity you're not sure um as he kind of glares at you not with real eyes you know there's basically just this glazed over black eyes and a, a slight amount of fire kind of emitting all around him as he looks kind of onward to you and in a language that no one else can understand he says Faust, it was you, after all, who decided to forgo the promise of heaven. And you know that this is the hell of your own making. Can I speak the same language? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to reply and say, Mephi, what are you doing here, you Ashlock? Well, you know the deal. Yes, I know Time's the up, deal. but if you decide to do the right thing, then maybe we can defer the transition back to hell. You know, what is the right thing in this instance? Well, uh, obviously it wouldn't be relevant to, or in your best interest to save these companions that you have acquired. And we have a lot of work to do, something oh. that you are very well aware of. Bliss, after all, is something that you've always seeked. Isn't that of interest to you now? Yes. Yes, I do like this. Um, when you say defer, are we talking an extension or are we thinking more like forever? 
Are you going to kill well, me again? No. I don't I didn't like killing you the first time around. So preferably this arrangement can be extended indefinitely and with the power that we all have together, I don't see why not. And you won't be hunting me anymore? Well, no, because I'll know where you are. See, now, that worries me a little bit. Why? Hey, how does, uh, well, uh, because uh, last uh, time uh, we made a deal, <laughs> you killed me. More than once. <sighs> Technically speaking. That's true, but we can strike a new bargain. I I do not particularly want to fight you or these other people, um, but I also don't trust you. The big man in sand uh, seems like kind of an, a dick. Um... <laughs> The place sounds good. I like that, but uh, mm, you're going to have to offer me some kind of guarantee for me to uh, agree to this. Well, if you're not interested in fighting, I guess the next best thing is that you volunteer to sleep, and then you'll just be in bliss forever. And you don't have to that worry about it. That sounds very boring. I don't want to do that. Well, that's not the answer that we were hoping for. I haven't given you an answer yet. I just, I laid out my cards. That's all I'm saying. Okay. What, let's what let's have... not get fighting. I, I look towards Shiyu, the Avatar. Avatar see you and say, "What about you, buddy? You've, you, you know, you've, you're about the whole soul thing right now. What are you reading in these guys? Doesn't look so good to me." They seek to play gods when they are but mere mortals. What right do all of you have to decide this for everyone? You're mistaken yeah. if you think we're not gods. Oh, you may think you're gods, but you are the barest, faintest facsimile of one. What do you consider a god? You want some ice? This is the salmon addressing you. I consider a god someone above all of this. Someone who doesn't feel the need to intervene, who lets fate do its thing, who lets people make choices, suffer, succeed, fail, die, be happy. Someone who doesn't seek to prune a rose garden, but lets the wildflowers grow free. For that's what the world is. It's not a garden for you to choose what to do with. It's a field of flowers. Some die, some live. That's how it is. Well, you certainly are very eloquent in your approach to life. But it's surprising you don't see how wilted these flowers are that you speak of. How corrupt and this thing has flowers, become. And shit flowers. That oh was their fate. And that was their choice. And don't you give them fertilizer or water whilst they grow? Do you have no influence Oh, you give them all? some. But you don't. You don't get to choose 
whether they take it or not. Yeah. People and deserve if a one choice. flower, if one flower is poisoning the rest of the bed, do you not prune that flower? Only if it seeks to play God like these do. Perhaps a chokeweed then. Those that survive will survive. Those that die weren't meant for anything more. I don't think you're any different to Mr. Sandman. I think this comes down to uh, pretty, pretty simple stuff. Do we believe in the genocide of people? For me, that's a no. That's, uh, you know, strike two. As far as I'm concerned, I'm gonna say that's strike free somewhere. Pass strike free, actually. Do we believe in free will? Yes, I do. And people have got to fuck up, and that's why we put in place police officers. And when they fail, they put in new ones who are better than I am. If you fight, Gibbs, your family may die. If you die here, who will protect them? You guys will. I have a question, Shaw. Shaw is gone. You seem to thrive, oh, God. whoever you are, whatever form you may have taken this time. You seem to thrive on fear, correct? Indeed. What these people are offering you is not the fear of everyone. They seem to, seem to make every. They seem to want to make everyone compl What's the word? Compliant? Not compliant. They, these people, they're putting people to sleep. They want these people to have pleasant dreams. Where's the fear in that? Everyday Good life, question. what we have now, people live with the fear of the unknown. What is more frightening than that? I think at this point, I'll whisper into either the Sandman's or Tom's ear and ask that he makes a good point. How do I thrive when everyone is asleep? Does it need to be bliss or should it be nightmares? He kind of responds, uh, the, the same man. Well, we can't let everyone have happy dreams. What about all those criminals? Oh, we can get the best of both worlds. We can move people out of the way and still give them freedom of choice in their own dream simulation. So what happened now you're to getting friendship? It. And I look at Shaw. And I point at the bracelet that he gave me. Follow-up question, have you ever seen The Matrix? Because you're <laughs> sounding a lot like Keanu Reeves. Bad guy. <laughs> this was inevitable. <laughs> please please do. do. Let's montage The Matrix, please. <laughs> Fucking robots come in and the second one was disappointing. Yeah. I'll whisper in Lena's ear. We can still be friends, you know? I know the darkness dwells inside you. I've seen it. Join me. You won't have to kill any innocents. We can avoid fighting. It definitely seems like innocent people are going to die. I can't Not stand by that. Die. Rest. Rest and have a beautiful mix of dreams and nightmares whilst we doc. pave the way for new civilizations come on doc this isn't a way to do this this is exactly what we've been fighting against this whole fucking time no one has ever explained to dr shaw what we've been fighting against the entire time it might be this buddy just a quick heads up reality check like the bad guys, you know? Like the fucking guys who are like, that's 
end the world. Let's rule over everyone in their nightmares. That's like, that's the stuff of, of bad stuff, man. And who are you? What's gone into you? Who are you to decide who is good and who is bad to be the moral compass for mankind? What if you're Listen. the bad guy? Right. There are some things that I think are questionable. You know, morality is, uh, you know, a gray line, stuff like that. There are definitely some things, though, which are universally considered wrong or evil. Take an example. Murder's pretty bad. Killing everyone's real bad. You know, You never genocide. complain. But what? When I beheaded the woman in the garden, I asked I you if you approved. I asked if you approved, and you said yes. There's there's a difference, though, isn't it, Doc, between defending yourself from a crazy poison lady who's trying to murder you and your friends, and voluntarily saying, "I am going to rule over an empire of actual nightmares." Right? There's some space in between those two things. What if you're wrong? I then don't he's think wrong. I am, Doc. But he doesn't decide that for everyone. Yeah, I'm saying that I don't get People to decide that. decide that themselves. Right. He sees things from his point. They see things from their point of view. What you seek to do is to decide for everyone. That's not okay, Doc. Follow your friends. My name is not Dr. Hezekiah Shaw. I am yeah, Deimos. I thought you could say that. My name is Deimos. It has been some centuries since I graced Earth properly, but I was once hailed as a god. A god who is against war. Against battle. One who would scare people away from it. Fear is a powerful motivator. Yeah. Well, I believe in fighting a good fight, even if I'm scared. You come from a country that developed a hydrogen bomb, a weapon so terrifying that no one would dare use it. it speaks a lot. Let's put another perspective on this. This is Sam yeah. What if sure. the greatest advances of humankind could be done without a timetable? Free to create and imagine all in their minds until they solve the world's greatest problems. And they don't have to worry about mundane moments of life during that whole process. Can you imagine how easy it would be for them to cure illnesses that would normally be fatal? Give people the best infrastructure to restore the earth. Why how would they do that? Is that evil? Because we would help them learn. We create these dreams and they use their imaginations, their conscious training to excel in those dreams. If they're all in bliss, where's the motivation? To keep going for more. Everybody always wants more. Of that, there but is why no do doubt. people want more? Because they always seek it. It's an inherent motivator for them. When they have something good, they want more of it. They want to feel that forever. Ah, but if good is all they know... The bliss. Only reward those who develop something towards things. If good is all they know, there's no motivation there. There's no, I want more good because there could be bad. This of is course, just you life. can still tell them there could be bad. But they never have to actually experience it, so they don't get distracted. They've never experienced it. How do they know what it they is? They remember. They remember what it feels like. But it doesn't get in their way. 
Listen, I've seen Total Recall. This never goes well. Uh, All right, here's the bottom line. Faust. What you thinking? Yes. Uh, well, um, and I'm gonna turn to the Sandman and ask him uh, in the language that I was speaking to Mephistopheles in. Uh, how much bliss are we talking? Infinite supplies. He responds in the same language. Shit. Um. And what is in it for you? If you haven't figured it out yet, you will. You don't feel like just telling me? You feed off of emotions. I feed off of dreams. Is that clear enough? Yes, thank you. Um, and I'm gonna turn back to Mephistopheles and I guess in the same language, I'm gonna say, so you okay with uh, empowering this man to such a large degree that he basically becomes a god? Well, the thing is, I don't have very much alternative for me. If you're dead, what is my purpose? If you're really dead, I'm not talking about what we've gone through before. Yes, I mean, you if you are me, wiped from that. existence. Yeah. We had fun. Don't lie. Um Maybe one of us had more fun than the other one. Mm. Fine, okay. Well, this is how I look at it. I like life. It is uh, exciting. Uh, there's lots of pleasure and fun. And I think a dream world would be either hell, which I, you know, been there, done that, uh, or it would be extremely boring. So I think I'd probably going to pass on this, which I'm very aware. The man of the sand, he can hear me, and I was hoping he, he wouldn't have taught him the language at the very least, but whatever. Um, so yeah, no, I, I think I think I'm out. That's a shame. I look, you said that? Yeah, I looked at the weird Faust is he saying this in, a, in another language. Yeah, he said it in a different language. <laughs> so... Faust? Oh, yes. No, I am I'm with you. Uh, let us... Uh, maybe someone right. could take, uh, take on the big uh, flaming guy. Uh, I don't particularly want to. Got it. Him. Okay. But, uh, See you or the thing that was see you sensing that you're pretty against these guys too. Uh you mean, oh, you mean it? Yeah. I have one last question though. Which one of you killed Shiyu's sister? Does that really matter to you? I'm pretty sure it matters to Mr. you. It matters to me because, once again, some of you seem to be trying to play God. Hmm. Well, Lena could tell you more about me, and the guy on the far far side speaks up, but doesn't really matter too much. It seems that you. Uh, you unleashed abilities, which gave us quite an interesting perspective into who you are. So thank you for that. Uh, 
I'm with you. I seek Dina. to I seek to save to keep the status quo. And you're gonna stand for this bullshit. <laughs> Seeing as and then she kind of stops for a little bit and turns back to that like weird creature that I'm kind of familiar with. No. And I look back at Shaw with like eyes of betrayal, like he let me down. I am and against I sigh. conflict. But for fear. Well, how do you think this is going to get resolved? You guys aren't just going to let us walk out of here, right? Think Never of all the everybody. terrible things that could happen if the eight of us with all our ridiculous powers were to fight. Think of the terrible devastation that could wreak on the earth, let alone anything else. There must be some way we can parlay. Compromise. Doc, some things are right, some things are just plain wrong. You're in the wrong here. I I also have a question for the shadow in the man. Um I don't know what his name is. Uh the artist formerly known as Dr. Shaw. Um So you like fear? Yes, that is what I'm getting. I am fear. Cool. Um would you like to try and uh, instill fear in a honest to goodness demon? It sounds like a challenge. I am not usually one to rise to challenges. Why not? Bravery is for the weak. And the stupid. I can't talk to this man. Someone else do it. Yeah, Lina, I do not wish to betray you. But I fear that if we it? fight, none of us will survive till morning. Doesn't matter, Doc. It's better to stand for what you believe for and die than it is to let evil like this go unchecked. It is evil. Could I get you to roll me a convince roll against me? Can I do that? Sure. Can I call that? Go for it. Yeah, absolutely. I don't have anything for convincing people, so this isn't going to go well, by the way. <laughs> uh, so. Mm, don't have that anymore. Um, oh, you know what I could do? I haven't seen Shaw's like, flashback, have I? I didn't experience that. No. Okay. What I would like to do to like i guess narratively give gives a reason uh the reason would be like hezekiah is now talking just about fear and how he is fear so like there's something going on back there right gives us an understanding mm -hmm. that there's something about fear which is driving him so i would like to use my like powers on him so like, i can see memories cries of distress sense danger piece of the puzzle for me to see those memories and to understand why he is uh experiencing that fear maybe see that like a glimpse of a flashback to to get what it is in his past that is making him feel this way um and that's the only thing i'd have <laughs> would be those okay things because i've got nothing that would uh, would help really 
Mm, that would probably be a change the game. Mm -hmm. To use your abilities that way. Okay. Let's do it. Um, do you think I have any stasis on me at the moment, do I? What did I put this? Um, Not yet. No, it's just a damage thing, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so I think it's plus four. Give it a go. Come on, dice. <laughs> That's a 14. Okay. Good. So, you'll get a total of six juice that you can use. Um... This is probably going to be a story tag, so that you can mm -hmm. use it to try to convince him. Um, and if you don't want it to be obvious that you access this flashback of his, uh, you can also hide the effect since you got over a 10. Um, yeah. So, and then you can bank the rest of the juice if you want, based on what you're narratively trying to do. Yeah, I think it's a case of giving him the tag um I don't, don't want give to yourself say, like, a tag. Yeah, yeah, I I you know, I don't think it's necessarily a like a bravery thing. I think it's more like a sense of justice of like uh this is wrong and you know, like we don't allow for acts of like evil to go unchecked. So maybe like a you know, sense of justice because he's been seeking that moral compass in Gibbs before. Mm -hmm. um, so I can spend up to six juice. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely cover it up so no one else saw it. Um, I'd probably just just burn all that juice, man. Like I just I probably dump it all into him. Okay. Um. So this will give you access to his flashback. You're still going to need to convince him, but if you're you if you're setting up the giving to give yourself advantage here, I would say probably um, maybe something along like empathetic or like you you because mm -hmm. you've seen the suffering, so you know. And you've seen what he did, like the choice that he made. Um, so you kind of have a glean into the fact that fighting for him, and you can correct me if I'm wrong about any of this, Scraticus, but fighting for him is unnecessary because people will continue to die if you fight. And that's his whole, his whole principle is to instill fear so people stop killing each other. So they don't do that, um, which the way that the Sandman and the rest of them are appealing to his senses know and understand that of why would we, why would we put people through wars and, you know, terminal illnesses and all that. We can create a, a, an environment where fear is not going to be the reason that people do go to war, it's going to be the reason why they don't. So, yeah, I would say, like, you're basically almost like an empath right now with what he's feeling and what he's going through. Um, and it's probably very overwhelming, the, the sensation that you get when you feel all of that power being projected into you. Um, so, yeah, let's give you the We'll give you the empath story tag um, for him specifically. Okay. It's only applicable to to Shaw. And then, if you want to put a, if you want to use that to put um, maybe a a like a story tag on him of what do we want to call it? Like. I would, let's just call it moral compass because it's relevant in by way that he did find, he did look up to Gibbs. Um, so you can use that prior relationship to benefit you. 
And if you want to roll convince, that can give you a plus three. So that leaves you with one juice. Okay. Yeah. If Let's you want to do anything else. Yeah. So I think, yeah, the convinced okay. is. Um, yeah, it's probably just a plus three because everything else is not going to help me here. Okay. So it's two, six plus three. Plus plus four because of your own. Yes, the sorry. The one that yep. you have, the story thing you have, yeah. Okay, no whammies. Oh, baby. Thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. So, on a ten or more, you can change their ad agenda to include yours, at least for the time being. So if something flips that again, that's going to be lost. So go ahead and right. I'll let you guys narrate all that. Yeah, I think I kind of reach out and probably just like touch him on the shoulder for a moment and understand uh, what he's feeling and he can understand what I'm feeling. Uh, and I just say to him, we've got to do the right thing, Doc. No matter what the cost. So that's your true fear, not... Not dying or even your family dying, but... Becoming an evil man. I guess so. Do you oppose war? Yeah. Here's what I say. Then I shall stand by your side. Here's what I do. I would like to use my powers to give everyone in the room, both parties, um, I want to change the game. I want to give them all a status of opposed to conflict. I want to make them all scared of fighting. Everyone. Normally I don't say this as a GM, but are you sure you want to do that? Because <laughs> <laughs> don't forget certain people in this party mm. and another might have immunities. And I know this is a little bit metagamey, but I'm just saying it, you're oh, more than welcome to do so this. <laughs> you're more than welcome to. I just want to be sure that you thought this through. <laughs> The thing about Shaw is he doesn't think things through too much. He thinks on okay. the moment. And okay. yeah, that's 100% what he'd do. Okay. Sure. So go ahead uh, um, and tell me what you want to burn to succeed at this. Um, I'll burn the uh, instill creeping we'll anxiety. Right back, obviously. It's just the oh, one. You burn. Uh, it, it's just the one. So you can you you succeed at making it happen, but one. Hold on, one. Two of them will be affected slightly. The others will not. On. Sandman side of things. Um, as far as the party is concerned, anyone who's not an avatar, you guys will need to face danger um, to see if you can reduce the level of statuses that he is imposing on you to not fight. Unless you don't care and you don't have to roll. It's up to you. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> So I got rid of my policeman logos mm -hmm. last week and I replaced it with a mythos. So I now have mm -hmm. three mythos. So am I an avatar, right? No. This could be like a... You have... No? Okay. I still got like gun no. thingy. Yeah, if you it. still have a logos, you're not an avatar yet. Okay, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, sure, I'll roll. Why not? Let's see what happens. Um... Mm, 
You can take that plus one still since you're you can yeah, feel what yeah. he's feeling, so I can sense danger. Yeah. Um so I think that's probably it, because Yep. Let's do that. That's an eleven actually, damn. It's a seven. Okay. Okay, so you're not gonna take the effect, but you will you will get that sweep of his uh, his uh, de desire to disable the idea to have these conflicts. Um, Lena, on the other hand, with a seven, you can, you're gonna take the status, but you're gonna reduce it by one. So with Shaw, uh, what, what exactly, what is the exact status that you would like to impose here? Um, scared to fight, um, avoid conflict, perhaps. Um, you know, that okay. specific sort of fear. Okay. So, avoid conflict. Um, okay. So, that's gonna be, um, for Lena at a minus one. How much, how much of your, of your power do you want to put in? You said you were gonna, like, you got a three, so how much do you want to... Put on it. Oh, I put, put all my power into it, yeah. All three? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, go ahead and you put yours to a one, because I'm a, I had to distribute these across the, the other two that are affected. So, you're going to avoid- you're at avoid conflict one right now, Lena? As well as the others. Um, yeah. What's wrong? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Am I so? I'm avoiding conflict because of what he rolled, or what like he yes. imposed or added to the thing. Yes, okay. the status is avoid conflict, uh, and yeah, you're gonna just have that at a one. That's all. Okay. Yeah, and this is not an indefinite thing. It's just a temporary status, mm -hmm. like most statuses can be moved, modified, etc. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. okay. So. With that said, um, do you want to tell us, Scarticus, how this happened? Like, what what is the effect? What does it look like as you're having this moment to to have these experiences for these people? So I I mentioned that I am fear. Uh, the shadows will co coalesce, and I will appear once again sort of armored i'm gonna appear larger than life um wearing a sort of um black suit of armor uh that's maybe partly levered and such with the sword of Ares in my hands uh larger than life and uh, i will be visually making the fight look difficult for our opponents and I'm more yeah, basically, I want to give the impression that if I get involved in the fighting, then everyone will, could die. Okay, got it. Yeah, I think so. Sita we're gonna seeing this. She's definitely but... gonna remember when she tried to save you, or she was originally gonna save you when the Rose Lady, because she thought you were the most powerful, uh, and that's. Like, your form is basically going to confirm that, and she's just going to, like, step back a little bit. So she's scared of you, basically. She's like, yeah, this is probably Aww. not a good idea. <laughs> Friendship <laughs> bracelet, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh, so, as this kind of is all unfolding, Pedro's at the back, kind of, like, leaning up against a wall. So... Are we uh, are we still having this conversation? Or are we gonna do something? Like what what uh what is the plan here, guys? So I feel like this is not a great situation, and uh, be real honest, uh, kind of feeling those tacos. Apparently Rosenberg doesn't like tacos too much, but um, 
So if you don't need me, or if you could give me like five, all right, five, like 15 minutes, uh, you know. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna need no. you to stick around here, Pedro. Uh, I think someone's about to go down. Okay, maybe I eat some tacos. Perhaps be useful for once in your life. I am useful. Why are you so mean to me? Listen, those tacos so changed stating, my life. I was just stating a fact. Literally, he's mean to everyone. Are you sure you guys are on the right side? Do you hear how he talks to me? It's been like this the whole time. That's the only reason I know we're on the right side right now. <laughs> Are you saying that I'm a bad guy? Pedro, you seem like a stand-up kind of guy. And I'll honestly... I feel very judged. You're fine by me. Well... But, uh... Maybe you can help us out. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I'm not sure. I'll buy you a shitload of tacos, Pedro. Okay. All the tacos you oh. can possibly want. So many flavors. I still want that pie. We're going on a tour. Yeah, pie too. Pie. We're going on a whole yeah. tour of. Yeah. It's just going to be amazing. Okay, good. I don't know if fighting That's is good. a good idea. Sandman, you <laughs> back down. We will destroy you, and we don't want to. He kind of chuckles. Oh. oh, so many bad decisions all of you have made. A lot lately. This is probably the worst of it all, though. It's a very, very serious shame, though. Could have been... Could have been good for you. But I think we've realized and discussed exactly enough to know where we all stand. I don't see a reason for us to continue this conversation. So if you don't mind, I will be taking my leave. You can hash it out with the rest of these people. I have other I business to attend to. Like to use my original first improvement I ever got on my Mythos to hit with all I've got without needing to do any form of setup. And I would like to do that with um uh, with my with my sword. I'd like to teleport the sword into him. Okay. Which power tag? Or this is the story tag you're using? With, um, um, no, I'll use I'll use the, the teleporting sword tag. That that works. Oh, it okay. comes right back, right? So, yep. Okay, great. Um, as you kind of let go, release the sword, whatever. It was, do you have to? Do you want to? Yeah, just describe like, how it looks. Okay. Throw it, and it sort of like sort of becomes incorporeal for a second, and then appears just before plunging into his back. Yeah, uh, as you, him. sure, I mean, he's facing you, so probably be kind of his stomach area, generally, wherever you were aiming. Uh, and he looks down as his, his body literally collapses into sand and then reforms immediately. <sighs> Teleport the sword back to my hand. Well... That was very disappointing. As the others around you, with the exception of Shiyu's brother and the man that you're familiar with, Tom, every uh, the other two immediately begin to move towards all of you. But the others are they, they, the other two are very hesitant, and they are stopped by that. I don't we don't know if we want to fight kind of thing. Like they have that moment. Um, so they're going to stand off for a second, but um, the man that you all recognize with that weird mist form kind of <laughs> steps forward uh, and makes another step. And on the second step you see as his body starts to expand 
and the mist that's forming around him seems to be kind of bellowing upwards as his entire form goes up and further until it reaches the ceiling of this room and breaches it. And you guys are on the top floor as it's breaching through the roof that is now being cascaded. All the debris is starting to fall down where he did this as the rain starts to come in from the storm that has now fully grown outside and is he he kind of just looks there hulking with this mist just kind of emitting off of him like steam when water hits something hot and he looks at you Lena and he looks at the rest and he says and this time because he's so massive it's that the echo is so much more predominant it's almost like it's you can feel like that that moment in front of a speaker the when it's like hitting against your chest that's how loud it is and he says this is the last chance don't be a disappointment to your father is this my dad and i, I Not- look at him in sh- shock and seeing as I already don't want to fight, I, like, look at him a little bit closer and say, that? So this is, you know inherently, like, the, the, in, in, like, the rift inside you knows who this is. But you haven't fully unleashed that part, you haven't unlocked it. And but that feeling in the back of your mind, and it is, you do get that feeling like, is this my father? Kind of, yes. So you do get that imminent kind of blood relation, so to speak, that feeling. I don't, I look back at the group, I don't think we should fight this. I mean, Shaw's right. We might destroy more than more lives than we know. I mean, if we fight, we might die. If we don't fight, everyone will suffer a worse fate than death. We have no choice at this point, Lena. Can't have that on my conscience, can you? And Nina just kind of looks at her, maybe, um, in the group, and... Is there, and I look back at the, at the dead, and there's no way out of this? You, you guys can't just leave everybody alone and live your life? There's nothing left to live here. They've destroyed it all. Can you move somewhere else? Another planet? Is there like a god planet? A world? You are still very pure of heart, but that will fade. And then when he says that um, Lena's gonna go full on uh, raven and and say I wouldn't be so sure about that okay let's pause there for just a second as uh, Lena is about to to go all out guys um, are you thinking that's going to be a stop holding back or are you just kind of posturing right now uh, no yeah it's going to be a stop she's going to stop holding back okay We'll, we'll figure out the narration in just a second. Think about exactly what you want to do and kind of what level of stop holding back you want here because this dude is like enormous, like, whoa, really tall. Um, yeah. So <laughs> like, how is the building still standing right now with how tall this guy is? Um, so, okay, pause on that while you're thinking about what that's going to look like. Um, Mephistopheles is the other one who was unaffected by Shaw's avoiding conflict kind of status here. And 
looks to you, Faust, and again in his language, well, just like old times, uh, and he is going to come after you. So what's going to happen here since you are an avatar? He is going to try to grab you. Um, since he is larger than you, this is a, we're going to do a go toe to toe. So what you're going to do is you're going to roll go to toe to toe to fend off the attack and like counter him. Um, since since I don't, I don't do rolls for, for this system. Um, so tell me if there's any abilities that you want to use to overcome him grabbing you. Reminder um, on the psychological parts being immunity. Wait, is he immune to psychological like, things? Asshole. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Question: Are there? Um, do I feel the presence of possibly sleeping blissful people in the vicinity that I could perhaps? Feel yeah. Now you do. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So feeds off bliss. Mm-hmm. Uh. Inflame the senses is at least partially a kind of mental thing, so it probably wouldn't work. Um, yeah. Again, future voices wouldn't really work. Uh, quick study. Uh, in How? the sense of, uh, in the sense of like reading his movements and maybe being able to okay dodge out the way. Yeah, I'll give which you that. Which is two. Um, okay. So do you want to burn or do you want to roll? Uh, burn. Because they come back okay. anyway, right? Yeah, yeah. You just you know, you're gonna get the three that you can use on this. So it's always gonna be a ten, and then you choose the two options of go toe to toe. Um, so you can rebuttal in some way. Uh, you can get them good, and then your tier the tier is equal to the power, which is three. Um, or you can, oh, and you can block dodge or however else you want to kind of narrate the ability that you have here, seeing kind of seeing, being able to see the attack coming kind of deal. Okay. Uh, so do I still roll? Cause that would be- No, no. Okay. We're not going to roll cause it's always going to be a 10 anyway, 10 or more. So it's always guaranteed. It's for time's sake. We don't need to do all right. rolls for avatars because <laughs> you guys are going to be going all pretty ham right now. <laughs> um, so I can I can dodge and then so get him back. Did you say? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. So I imagine like he kind of swings like not try probably not trying to kill me i would imagine and trying to grab yeah, me trying to grab you yeah and i um uh, uh i kind of roll out of the way at the last second as like his hand like swings close to me um and uh can i can I send my snakes in to restrain him? Uh, yeah, so I'd like to uh, I'd like to send my my snakes in to uh, basically like wrap around him and like restrict his body movements, like slowing him down. Okay, perfect. I will. Um, we're gonna say restrained uh, at a three. Um, is what you imposed. Because of his physical ability, it's just going to be. Excuse me. I feel like I'm going to have hiccups and then I don't. Uh, a one <laughs> with okay. his uh, reduction. Yeah. He's had a restrain one, which means he can break out of it, but right now he is restrained. Um, so, with that said, the Gibbs, you're kind of seeing as this happens over there where Lena is as this monstrous form just kind of expands and breaks open this building. Uh, the um, 
the other two, Hugh's brother and and the man that kind of looks still human as well. The only two human looking <laughs> things in here, um, aside from you guys, pretty much. They hesitate. Uh, and um, the Mephistopheles, you see the in initial battle kind of start to ensue between him and Faust. As the Sandman looks at you and begins to walk away. Uh, I'm stupid. Right, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna <laughs> pull out my gun as I see Lena handling her dad's situation. Faust has got Mephistopheles as far as I'm concerned. She use he's got something handled. Sure, who the fuck knows, but the Sandman dude, he's mine, so I draw my pistol and I point it out to him and say, Don't you dare turn your back on me. Come back here, you piece of shit. <laughs> he's gonna keep walking, ignoring you. I hit him with all I got. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, tell me what you wanna do here. Okay, so Quick draw, gunman's intuition, explosive bullets, crack shot. Uh, and that's it. Okay. So a three, plus three. Yep. Come on, dice. Be with me today in this finale. You guys hate me. They have been hate so, so much. Twelve. Twelve is good. However, if a how do you how do you blast yes. and hurt sand? That's true. So uh, these are the explosive well, bolts, right? They're are explosive. They explosive ones? Sand can explode. So that's true. Uh, so that's my plan. And okay. um is to basically fire it at him and it just like disintegrates sand away and kind of like blast sands sand out, so Maybe that has more of an effect against him because it's like destroying his form more so than like destroying the sand particles themselves. Okay, yeah, so this is a bullet to the back because he's already started to walk from you. Um, right. With uh, the hit with all you've got at a, at a 12, um, do you. Are you trying to get his attention back? Is what I want to know. Absolutely. Okay. So we'll apply it to <laughs> that, and then also, so with a three, um, I will allow you to uh, three power. You're going to hold his attention, and then also, um, you're going to get him good. So it's a plus one per tier. So at three, um, mm -hmm. what I'm going to give you is so he's. For purposes of this combat, he's mostly immune to damage, like physical harm. Right. Um, it would take something else to do this, but because you're 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 trying this effect, you're oh, you're learning more about the strategy it takes to deal with him. You know, I um, think so. Gibbs has like in the back of his mind, he sees the dude who's like taking down the building, and he's like, that guy knows what he's on about. With, you know, like. As when it comes to feats of incredible strength. I probably can't destroy him, but maybe we could... You know, maybe Gibbs could lure him in there with the help of Lena mm -hmm. as well. So I want him to turn back so that we have a chance of killing this guy and, you know, draw him back into the Labs. Right. Yeah, so what you do see is uh, the effect um, doesn't last. You, you see the initial wound and then it's this the sand kind of opens and then closes again um releasing the bullet to the floor and um he kind of slowly like he had he got hit and he had like the initial jerk motion forward and then he slowly turns around and gives you this absolute look of just not just not annoyance but fury like there is like Seriously, like you are interrupting me right now, kind of just this yeah. fury and anger behind I, it. Yeah, I kind of, um, I got the look of uh, 
<laughs> like die hard movie on my face right now as I'm like, ah, finally woken up, have we? Come on then. <laughs> okay, good. Fucking Let's Bruce. swing real quick back to Lena. And then we'll go Suddenly over my to shirt you. Is super dirty for no reason. Tell us well, what we're doing here with stuff holding back. Sure. So with me stop, yeah, yeah with the stuff holding back thing, um, Lena's gonna go into her full on, like, I guess emo look, angsty look, I don't know. Um, okay. Her eyes are gonna go all black. She's gonna go. She doesn't have this like really weird purple blackish aura on her, and her raven is gonna come out. But since she's lost it, um, the raven's gonna appear even bigger than last time uh, when they were fighting the lady. And it's not as big as uh, her dad, but it's big enough to like fill this room without the. Of yeah. Yep. And yeah, her hands are just gonna go all like mixed and mixed. Okay. Do you think what what level of stop holding back are you thinking this is? Uh, what's the highest level? Ultimate. Are you going full uh, My Hero Academia Ultimate here? Yes. <laughs> Thank okay. <you>. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. So what Thank you're going to you do is you're going to, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what you're going to do is roll how, uh, roll your uh, 2d6 plus the number of logos you have left. Um, Which I still think is three or is it two now? Yeah. No, it's still three. Still three? Okay. So you're going to do a 2d6 plus, plus three. three. Yes. Mm -hmm. On a six or less, you're going to pay the price as well as lose control. Shit. Okay. No. See, I don't oh, have to God. use my my critical oh, shit. against you guys. Wow. Oh, wow. That was that was pretty felt, man. Okay. Rip. Well. F to pay respects. <laughs> Fuck. Holy shit. Um. <laughs> okay, guys. To to reiterate to the audience, this is. An ultimate is, if you fail it, you pay the price, which is killed, destroyed, or transformed forever. Um, so, I'm going to allow you to narrate <laughs> how this looks for you, but here is the, the, the bullet point results. You're going to uh -huh. completely lose yourself to the raven. Like, you as Lena no longer exist. It is just this form, uncontrolled. We're so, so here. <laughs> so, um, basically, moving forward, um, I would, I would probably say, like, you can tell me and, and everybody else kind of what it looks like mm -hmm. as the raven. It's almost like a departure from your body. Like your body is there, but it's not in control. Um, whether you're in your human form or fully transforming, I'll allow you to. Tell us what it looks like, but you as Lena herself, that's gone. Oops. Okay. Uh, this is fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> um, this is fine. <laughs> oh no. Whoa. My camera's like, no. I've had yes. <laughs> um, all right. So when she, since this is technically her first time losing it for sure um she's gonna feel this sort of how do i how do i explain it i guess weird power of hatred that she didn't know she had imagine a barbarian in a rage but worse so it's as she's transforming she feels this like he sort of bubbling in herself and at that point she tries to stop herself and she knows she can't 
and you see her just kind of like put her hands on her face and kind of like trying to shake it off and at that point like when the, she looks up like her eyes are just like no more like you just see like blood on her face her eyes where they would kind of appear uh, all black it's like a permanent emptiness in there and with like this weird kind of fog in them and she just like kind of twitches a little bit and she just grows not to the side of size of her dad but like almost there for sure and this sort of like white fog kind of comes out of her like if it's just leaving her body and she's just like a completely different person her hair is black now as opposed to like that weird purplish silver and yeah she doesn't yep. look very cute yeah it's not okay pretty. is her raven still like out and yes there yeah. okay it's like so massive. because you yeah yeah so because you don't have control over it anymore um can you tell me what you think it would do if it wasn't given that human consciousness yeah um i think the raven is still very loyal to her so it would fight for like if anybody tries to hurt her they'll definitely regret okay it. Okay, so basically anybody that approaches where you are, right? Because it doesn't know, it can't... Yeah. It's instinctually trying to protect you, even if it's a friend or an enemy. It doesn't yeah. know the difference. Yep. Exactly. Cool. Exciting. She you. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Right. Uh, was not expecting that at all. Um, so, uh, your brother... Well, she used brother... Hal doesn't care, but she's brother yeah. hesitates and doesn't move forward with the rest of the others. Same with yeah. Tom Klaus, who is mm -hmm. where Shaw was. Yeah. And I think what she would you like sort to of, do? Yeah, so I think she you um sort of pauses for a moment and looks at or sorry, Hal. Hal pauses for a moment and looks at She's brother, uh Sung Ho and he sort of just dismisses him from his like it was never about it was never about Sung Ho and he wants to go straight for the Sandman since he's the he's the big bad person um, and basically I think she just wants to hit him with as big of a sort of mental blast as he can sort of just scramble his emotions to the point where, like, basically I want to change the game and get rid of some story tags, or sorry, burn some tags from this person. Although, can they burn tags? Can we can we burn their ta his tags? Sorry, I don't hear you. I think you Oh. Sorry, yeah. I think fellow avatars can have their tags burnt as well as your own, right? Okay. Oh, wait, maybe not. Um... Uh, Hmm. Actually, I don't remember about that. Sorry. Um, I don't think you can burn an avatar's tags. He's an avatar, then. Um, yes. I can still give him statuses as much as I Correct. can. Correct. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm going to change the game and just basically I'm... She's just going in there and just trying to like scramble like all the things that control your emotions so that he's just utterly disoriented basically. Um, okay. And hopefully that'll affect his ability to do stuff. Um, so I mean I'm going to burn the control emotions tag um, burn inconspicuous burn in control of myself. Yeah, um, you, you don't need to. You don't need to keep listing them yeah. off because we're not going to roll yeah. these. Um, right. So, um, 
What what is the the status that you're trying to give him? I think just disoriented um plus 5, I don't know. Whatever is the highest okay. tier I can give him. Just just like just so disoriented that his just he has a hard time using his powers or something like that. Okay. Yep. And hopefully that'll give someone else a chance to <laughs> do something here. Yeah. Um, so we're into and okay, we will take the one from that, and you guys can keep going. So, what's gonna happen now is that, um, I'm gonna give Shaw a moment to act, and then I'm gonna do kind of a Tied together narrative piece here to progress us forward. Shaw will probably be looking around and realizing that he can't hurt the Sandman. He'll look around at the people around him that are likely to be able to be hurt. He wants to do as much damage as quickly as possible so the rest will surrender. Um, I'm guessing he's looking at Mephistopheles. Does Mephistopheles look like does he look corporeal, like the snakes are affecting him, like he can hurt him? Yes. Then that's where he goes. He turns his enormous sword and he'll throw it and teleport to it this time, plunging it deep into his restrained body. Okay. Yep. Um, you'll get a plus one on, on that. Not that you need to roll, but... Um... With the sword, we'll say it's a four. So you have a juice of four to apply here. Um, unless you guys like really want to roll, let me know. But I figure it's more narratively appropriate for us to kind of just move things through, if that's OK. <laughs> um, I mean, so I if feel you like we're going to fail. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's just a matter of who hits who harder first, <laughs> basically, is kind of where where we're at with the avatar stuff. Um, so at four juice, you can, you're hitting with all you've got, right? Yep. So you can go ahead and apply um, the, oh, wrong page. Okay. Yes, you can get them good. Uh, if you would like to do anything else, you can. Um, but I'll give you that, and he will be, he will take, um, if you're trying to pump all of that, then he will take two out of the four. If you want to just go yeah. for straight damage. I'll just okay. go straight up, try and hit him as hard as I can, get him good. Okay. So we're going to say wounded at two, and that is now out of the total that he needs to get before he is dunzo so to speak um so we got uh, that is a two here um okay so as you guys are kind of uh exchanging attacks and blows and just kind of responding and trying to counter and pr predict everybody's movements and such like that i would like for gibbs to face danger for me okay I can totally do that. Uh, physical danger? Uh, this is going to be a psychological thing. Oh, fucks. Um, sense danger. And... I think you have other things, come on. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's all yeah, mental. Yeah. It's the mental stuff. Yes, the mens rea. Uh, government's intuition. I've got like a sense of these things coming. Um, I mean, no, uh, I can hear cries of distress, so maybe if I'm using my power, I sense something bad coming. Yes, let's go with uh, that. And I think that's, that's probably all I've got. Um, okay. So plus three, is there anything else? That's it for right now. Yeah, that's just it, yeah. 
Come on. Oh, no, I pulled Alina. <laughs> <laughs> Two Jeez, you guys. God damn. <laughs> oh. Son of a bitch, guys. <laughs> um, that's okay. Can I spend some crits on this, maybe? I don't know. Like, I've got three, and that's when he's next to my name. Did I <laughs> improve it I, somehow? I hate retroactive, <laughs> but yes, sure. If you really want to, I will let you spend two to retroactive on that. You know. You know what? Why not? Let's do that. Okay. All right. So. You. This is, there's going to be a couple things that come into play here. Um, what I'm going to do is because Lena is somewhere <laughs> else. Uh, right now. What happens, um, so, so I can narrate this, is um, as she transforms and like kind of sheds this humanity, there's like a pulse of of energy that kind of emanates through the entire room as it moves across. Um, Gibbs, you get this, like, it's almost like a wave of water, but it's not, like, physical water. You just feel that energy. And um, in your hand is this watch, this uh, pocket watch, and you are given um, a vision of when Lena was back at the greenhouse and her looking down and seeing Rosenberg being killed as she hit the top of the stopwatch um, and stopped time. But in this in this behavior, you're gonna see. So you're gonna get a story tag of, um, let's say, time manipulation, um, and then the other one is going to be see the future. Um, so you have two story tags here as a result of that. So the benefit you're gonna get here is. I'm applying the see the future for 15 seconds ahead, the same way that you can rewind okay. 15 seconds. So, this is what you see. Um, you see as Shaw is taken by the Sandman. And he is encapsulated essentially by this sand, like uh, like almost like a, uh, a tornado as it wraps around him. And it is so strong that you can see parts of his body begin to be shed. Like whatever is there, even though it's not flesh anymore, it's like it's ripping pieces of him because of the sand is so fine. It's like sandpaper, right? Like it's just taking parts of him away um, and you see this happen, but you also see something else. Uh, and this is, this is, you can remove a critical from me um, because I'm giving you an MC hard move, which is make, you have to make a hard choice here. So you see that happen, and the other part you see is um, Faust, after the uh, Mephistopheles is wounded, um, he, he kind of has this moment where he, he also grows a little bit, but it's more like a hellfire that expands his physical appearance and destroys all the snakes that are on him, that are restraining him. Um, and it's almost like moments after he gets, uh, stabbed by, by Shaw. So it's like these two, two right. moments that are happening almost at the same time. But at the moment that Shaw finishes that, that's when the sand kind of starts to go around. Um, but right. Mephistopheles in his rage and response reaches for Faust and grabs him as his hands already completely engulfed in this hellfire. And the moment he starts to touch Faust, Faust is basically surrounded by this fire. So you see both of them in what appears mm. to be fatal. I'm, yeah, I'm situations. going to Left 4 Dead. Uh, not Left 4 Dead, the fucking uh, Telltale game style like yeah. choice yes. thing right yes. now. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, and I have to choose one, right? To be like, to give him a heads up? Yes. Yes. Oh, man. I think, unfortunately, for uh, Faust, it's definitely sure. Uh, and uh, for, for Gibbs, uh, he kind of calls out and is like, Oh, look out! And just kind of like point, over, you know, point my gun over towards the Sandman who's like making a move on him. 
Yeah. Yeah, you see, um, we'll, we'll go to Faust in a second, but Shaw, you see, uh, as, mm-hmm. as uh, Gibbs calls out to you, you see this wave of sand, like, it looks like, it's so thin that it looks like a razor just going towards you as it starts to, it, it's trying, you can see the curve going to try to surround you. <clears throat> so since you don't face danger, if you would like to respond somehow, you can. <clears throat> Can I change the game? Mm-hmm. Can I become ethereal? I want to become mist and shadows. <laughs> and I'd like to hold my teleporting sword just outside of the whirlwind so that as he spins me, I can potentially attack anyone close by. Okay, so can you're going to let the sand get around you? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll change my form so that I can't get hurt ah. by it. And then just yes. use my sword to try and turn okay. against him to change the game. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> sure. Yes. Let's do that. Um, okay. I'm trying to figure out how we're going to apply this. As the sand kind of wraps around you, um, I'm going to also say that other people won't be able to touch you because of the sand being in the way, so it's almost acting like a shield as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So, go ahead. Which power tag are you going to use to burn for this success? Um, Sword of Ares, uh, Warriors of Athens, the... um... When you you become a Mythos, do you get a fourth card? No. 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 You don't. You just. You don't have the the logos anymore. It was tempor- quote, temporarily there when you, if you ever fall out of uh, Avatar, but you don't get another Mythos card. <clears throat> okay, uh, it's probably just them two then. Okay. Oh, maybe so what I'll do? Well. Yeah, that's what you said before. Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> so two. Yeah, that's fine. Um, what we'll do is give yourself a story tag of sand shield and the other one is going to be ethereal form right yep okay so you'll have those and the sword um i'll allow you basically it will allow you to use that outside of in the way that you're talking about um as you're being kind of pulled towards the Sandman. Um, so over by where Lena was, there is an all-out brawl between the Raven form and this demonic towering person um, as more of the building starts to collapse. At this point in time, the man known as Tom has decided he's waited long enough and is going to move in and he picks up the the largest piece of debris that he can find which to everyone's amazement for those who can see um is inhumanly he's inhumanly strong like just there's no chance in hell he could pick up this part of a building but he does and he hurls it towards where gibbs and faust are uh, sorry, Gibbs, Shu, and Faust, or Hal and Faust. Um, but Faust, before that, before it reaches you, as you kind of see this this construction piece of construction of the building kind of hurling towards you, Mephistopheles is going to grab you, and I'm just going to give. Uh, I'm basically just using my my um, my crits here right now to grab you. So um, we're down another another crit. Um, and he picks you up and you can feel the hellfire and you remember the feeling um, as the fire, like the moment where he touches you, that's exact place and then it spreads around you and you can feel all of that pain and that torment that you remember from before. Um, you see that your, your snakes kind of disintegrate into ash. Um, as he breaks free of the restraints as well. And he takes you and begins to 
turn towards Shiyu. So he's holding you and he's turned towards Shiyu as well. Um, if you want to take an action here, you can, but you're going to be at a minus four due to the fact that even if you burn this, you're not going to be able to get out of the, the hold itself, but you can try to do something to him. Um... I will... Uh, I guess... Kind of... Pro probably... I imagine... Uh, fairly weakly, because the, the, the Hellfire and the mental torture and everything. Uh, I'm gonna say to him, uh, in... Um, the language. Uh, Velen, <laughs> Mephistopheles, I guess I will see you in hell. <laughs> okay. Love it. That's fantastic. Um, so, that's crazy. Um, trying to mark things off right now. Uh, I, okay, so, um, Shiyu, I'm going to give you a moment here, you, because you're not Shiyu, you're Hal, I don't know if you mm -hmm. are going to acknowledge it, but what you're going to see is Faust even though you hadn't seen it before, this hellfire, you can feel the soul being extinguished from what you remember as Jack. Even though he's not there, you can feel that body failing. Um, mm -hmm. And granted, Faust is Avatar, but he is still residing within the human form of Jack. And so that is what is being it's almost like being torn from his body. Like the soul, Jack's soul is being torn from his body. Um, okay. And you can see that flower as you normally would see it is engulfed in flame. So I will allow you, if you'd like to make any actions here, otherwise you can, you know, do something else. Um. <sighs> Oh, what am I gonna do here? Um, I I think he wants. He's going to save. He's going to try and save Faust. May probably not specifically because he, any of attachment to Jack as how he doesn't have any attack. But I think he does realize that he needs these other people to help deal with all these other people. <laughs> um, so I think he's going to try and save um, Faust. And I think do this. Um, oh, man. I think this may be the time where it's so... In his mythos, um, my my mythos, he has a flower that that makes. Um, oh man, this could backfire so hard. <laughs> um, um, he, it, it's that makes basically it makes everyone just fight each other, and I think he wants to direct this towards. Um, he wants to direct this towards Mephistopheles and make him fight one of his own people instead. Like, confuse him somehow. And force him to fight. I get the feeling this might end up being a stop holding back. You're an avatar. You can't yeah. Can but you, if you want to push it to the limit, I, I think... I don't know if you can uh, do a stop holding back as an avatar. But I could be completely wrong. Honestly, I I don't 
I don't remember. It's been a while since I read through that part of the rules. <laughs> um, I think you can still stop holding back. Okay. Yeah, you can still stop holding back. You just can't burn tags for it because it's uh, based uh, on your logos. Which, right, which it'd be zero. a flat roll. It'd be a flat yeah. roll. <laughs> please, Wouldn't it? please feel free. Oh yeah, but I mean, at the, I mean, at the very least, I, um, oh man, that would be rough. Um, it would, it would be under my expression mythos, the flowers of Suchan. So, okay. As my character, he knows he can do this. It, he just doesn't know what the fallback on himself might be. Um, okay. I think because I think he's fairly because this is his expression and he knows he can do this. It's just a matter of what's the fallout on me. Um, okay. It, yeah. It's oh, uh, is is this something like that I'd be able to see you doing? And um, I deal. I mean, I don't think so. Again, a lot of Shu's sort of power is that it's very inconspicuous. It's sort of more mm. like. Unless you, unless you're able to smell like the floral scents wafting through the air right now, it'd be very I'm difficult. I'm going to those dudes. No, Can't yeah. smell so I, don't, <laughs> I don't think you. I don't think you can smell it. Um. Oh man, yeah, and um, if possible, I think he, you know, if it, he would like to make this affect more than just Mephistopheles, like make them start fighting each other enemies but i think he's mainly focused on mephistopheles right now so would this be like a i'm uh, no return ultimate you tell me what you think um this level God, is uh, but mephistopheles isn't very susceptible at all mental self just fyi yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm. That's why I'm stop holding. That's why I'm doing the stop holding back. <laughs> I, yeah. you know, like, um, the whole thing I, is meant. I've got to get a sense that this has got to be an ultimate. I think. I mean, if I'm trying to affect feel, these creatures. Yeah, this is a demon, so there is a lack of. There is a lack of emotion that you inherently need to be able to do what you're trying to do. So yeah. I definitely think. If you're pushing through through that, and maybe like even just forcing a human emotion, you know, what I mean? like creating it out yeah. of nothing, essentially, would definitely be appropriate yeah. in this particular context. Um, mm -hmm. Then yes, I would yeah. definitely say ultimate because that's way beyond your existing skill set of yeah. what you're capable of. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. Here we go. Mm. Oh. I mean, what other counts as a free snake eyes in a row, right? Why would- why would <laughs> God, you just had to say oh, it! Why, why would oh. you do this, right? <laughs> is, is this a moment I could use my nat 20? <laughs> no. No, okay, I didn't think so. Uh, Here we go. That's an 8. eight. Okay. Alright, so on a 7-9. This is, um... Ooh. Yeah. I You're killed, you destroyed, or transformed forever. So, um, you're going to take the tier six status. Okay. Um, you're not going to be able to, to put face danger. Um, your status, I would. What I would like you to do. Mm -hmm. You can save Faust, and this is where the the decision is going to be on how this finishes off. Is you can save Faust if you take his place. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh. Oh. He'll do it. Because his mythos knows that if he's defeated, eventually another guardian will step up. Um, it won't be, may not be him. It may not be, it's definitely not going to be she, you. But. I think that's sort of how this field works, is that when the fields need a guardian, one will appear. So he's going to take Faust's spot. Okay. Would you like to narrate what it looks like as you unleash this ultimate power? Um, 
and save Faust from his fiery fate in hell. So, yeah, so does Mephistopheles, like, have a hold of Faust? Like, Mm -hmm. um, all right. So I think that this is, this is, um, Shiyu going, like, like, floating up to Mephistopheles and, like, gripping the whatever he's got a hold of him with on so that he has, like, direct contact, his hand. He has direct contact with Mephistopheles. And I think he's just forcing all the emotion. And I think, um, yeah, and he's just forcing, like, just all the human emotion that um, Hal sort of knows from a being able to see all this, but also just, like, taking that part of Shiyu and that, that what used to be Shiyu and forcing it into Mephistopheles. Um, and I think this just opened, like, the, and his, his eyes have gone, like, blank from doing this, and I think this opens him up. And I think Fa- Faust is dropped from um, Mephistopheles' grip. Um, okay. But Shiyu is completely exposed. Yeah, okay. I like it. So, Faust, you are, you're like midway in the air because he's so much larger than you as he, as you see uh, Hal, aka Shiyu, kind of take a grip to the wrist of Mephistopheles where he has you hold. And you can see all the fire transferring over to Shiyu as he drops you and changes his attention. Uh, And at that moment, as Shiyu's body, even if it's Hal, but Shiyu's body is encapsulated in this hellfire, uh, feeling that pain and that agony. Uh, Shaw, with his sword, just as, you know, you can see the final moments of Shiyu's body begin to wither through all of this pain. Um the sword of Athens kind of slides across and it severs the back section of Mephistopheles um, and he that is the final status he needed to incur as he collapses to the ground but but the demon can't really die and so he bursts into a hellfire as he leaves Shiyu's body, assuming his soul is now gone with him as they both return to hell. So. Sorry, Shiyu. Help. You were the weakest sleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Just a Faust. Um, <laughs> however, when you do that, um, the backlash from that flame is going to move you out of the Sandman's whirlwindy thing. Um, and I'm going to let you guys play out the rest of this scene. Um, at this point, if you were to look over where Raven and that monster is, her father, essentially, they both look fairly beaten up, but it almost seems as if Raven is definitely doing a little bit better. Her abilities, or or the Raven's abilities to kind of move fast and react are superior to the other. Um, But of course, at this moment, you still have that hurling piece of debris coming at you guys. So, uh, Faust, you're on the ground, so it's gonna go like almost barely right over your head. you, Shaw, are out of the way of it just in time. Gibbs, on the other hand, go ahead and roll a face danger. Physical. Thanks. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay, I got my protective shield. I sense danger. And I have Gunman's intuition, so I see things coming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If it's physical, is what does it require me to like roll out of the way, or is this like can I put up my shield and like just hold it? Do you think that your mythos is strong enough to take the blow of a massive piece of concrete and steel? I right, roll out of the way, and 
I'm not going to use my old leg injury as my okay. old resist. Okay. Plus two overall. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Eleven. Yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. Except for the double Very double. well done. Yes, please narrate you rolling out of the way of this <laughs> it's like massive a, debris. <laughs> I like this golden shield appears before me and I stand there waiting for it. And then Gibbs like, sees it coming as a shadow falls over and he's like, Shit, 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 and just dives out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Very good. At this moment in time, um, there is something that happens to the side of you, uh, for those of you left standing. Um, Shiyu's brother still hadn't done anything as he watched all this unfold. And for a moment, it's like he just doesn't know what to do, but when he sees what happens to his brother, he, at this point, transforms. Not himself, but it's almost like he beckons something and it rises out of the debris that has just fallen um, as the rain kind of at this point has started to pool in different areas of the um, of this floor. Uh, and it just combines itself until there's a literal dragon. Korean water dragon, okay? We're talking that kind of lore here. It is just manifests itself out of the debris and water uh, and is just like curled itself as the head rises out from the coil. And we're going to swing to um, the Sandman and Shaw, who are basically face to face at this point. Um, you guys are staring each other down. Yes, I don't know how to kill him. Um, <laughs> so I guess... I know my sword isn't going to be any use in this fight. So the first thing I'm going to do, if you'll let me sort of do it as like a free action, is I'm going to teleport my sword into the Raven's hands. It'll feel comfortable. Okay. It's off shadow. It'll, you know, that'll help her out. And I would like to appear in his subconscious and attack his mind. I want to try and cripple him with fear. Okay. Do it. Uh, I'm going to use read memories. I'm going to instill creeping anxiety. I'm going to use my dreadful ap appearance, appear in the subconscious, discover fears. That's what, 15 plus 15? Yeah, that's... Yeah, it's not going to... We'll talk about that later, but yes, you are going to give him a status. Um, here is what's going to happen. Um, you guys are basically, it's like a go toe to toe. So he, he is anticipating an attack from you. So he is going to try to counter your effects. What is going to happen here is you're going to succeed at stopping him from attacking you like that. He's going to, it's almost like freeze freeze in place, kind of like frozen uh, in fear. Um, and it's not going to be, by the way, uh, that you normally would do it because of what he is. It's going to... And you can you can narrate this because I'm going to tell you what his, his greatest fear is losing all of his power. Um, and the only way he has power is because of dreams. Um, so if you want to narrate what it looks like for him, uh, I will let you do that. However, and this is my other critical I'm going to use, you are going to be faced with a choice. You're going to do this, but only if you also fall asleep. You can stop him but you have to fall asleep to do it. So I will pervade the crevices of his mind and find the root in this fear. And what I would like to do is I would like to show him a world where he can't see the fears. All he can see is darkness. 
as I cover everyone's dreams with my own form as I guess I fall asleep and take a mantle as treasurer of nightmares protector of the sleeping yeah okay I guess <laughs> yeah great we'll resolve that last bit in a second Faust you have been released temporarily if anything from your fate in hell uh, you just watched you sacrifice himself for you as Shaw is now in you know facing against the Sandman Gibbs is rolled out of the way of massive debris and there is now a dragon hanging out Um, so the, um, the deal struck, uh, initially when, um, when Faust was visited by Mephistopheles and he asked for, uh, bliss and, uh, you know, pleasure and immortality and all this kind of thing. Uh, the part of the deal was being, um, pursued by Mephistopheles for eternity, basically. Uh, so with Mephistopheles dead, that kind of cancels... Well, you know, he's gone. Uh, he he has to come day. back from hell, which takes a while. Yeah, which means that until he comes back from hell, the bargain's broken, which means that Mephistopheles... Uh, Faust is going to get dragged back into hell. Um... Which is it, like it's it's basically the reason why Faust was pursuing Meph was trying to find Mephistopheles was because he wanted to get to him and change the deal. Work out. Yeah, change the deal or something like that. He didn't want him to die because he's killed him before <laughs> and he gets dragged back to hell. Uh, okay. So. Um, what's going to happen is uh, hands are going to start coming out of the ground and start to slowly tear away parts of Faust. Um, so I'm going to ask, can I make one final move before Faust disappears? Absolutely. Okay. You guys are doing um, this job for me. What can I say? Yeah. Uh, so Faust is going to stumble slowly towards uh, kind of where Sandman and Hugh's brother is and um, uh, he's got still got a couple of um, of snakes in his ropes and he's going to throw one out at each of them uh, the first one is going to uh, uh, I don't need to roll right uh, so the first one is going to um, land and bite uh, uh, Shu's brother, and there's going to be a little um, like ignition of the of the hellfire that consumed Faust partially and Shu, uh, and then the second one I'll leave to you as as uh, MC like what happens when it goes off the Sandman, and then. Uh, Faust is gonna look at Gibbs, I think, being pretty much the only one left, and say, uh, say, I have dealt with my demons. Good luck with yours. And then the last of him is, like, dragged down into hell. Uh, incidentally, leaving a card charred corpse, so. Bye, Faust. Oh my god. Ah, oh, okay. Freaking Pedro's over here, like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's what's gonna happen, Gibbs. Uh, you you see this with Faust. 
Raven is seemingly very successful now that she also has a immense, powerful sword in her grasp as she is cutting down the being that she's been fighting this whole time. Um, and it's a struggle. You can tell at this point that the power that she has left is exhausting itself, trying to do everything it can to survive and protect what is left of her human, like, or of her main corporeal form. Um, and as as that's happening, the, the, the fight is starting to push them out towards the edge where the glass is, and they, there is one misstep kind of on, on his end as his foot slips out the side uh, and he grabs on to her as well as they both tumble out of the building. Um, from whatever height you guys are at, an, enorm an enormous amount of height. But you see that and you also see that although Shaw is unconscious, you think? You're not really sure if he's sleeping or not, so mm -hmm. appears to be unconscious or whatever. The Sandman is there and he's just frozen. He's not moving or responding as a snake kind of slithers up and coils himself around his neck as it bites in. Um, the effect is not immediately present but you can see that there is a change in the way that he reacts to the wound because he's unable to... Right. Like, he's not able to do anything about it, um, but his body is going to change in a second. Um, the dragon, on the other hand, mm. um, gets bit by his snake. However... Uh, the fire is counteracted because it's a water dragon. So, even with Hellfire being a thing, um, is he is dealing with the, the bite relatively well. Right. Um, so, I will let you kind of... If you want to do something on either side of this. Uh, yeah, I think it's... Uh... A moment where he sees Shaw like in danger and he's like giving his life, it seems, caught in the struggle with the Sandman. And uh Gibbs realizes that the his like his gun isn't useful here. And the only thing that he really has is this this sense of destiny that he has. And one thing he knows is Valar Morghulis, all men must die. Uh and uh Something about the Sandman must cease, but he doesn't know how. And he knows that Shaw is doing something. So what I would like to do is stop holding back. And I would like to see the destiny of the Sandman's death. And uh, see where the like the threads of destiny are, are cut off for him. Um, which, I mean, it might sound a bit like an ultimate. Yeah, kind of. Are you going to yeah. try to do something with that, or are you just seeing Oh, I'm going to then, I want to see it, and then I'm going to make it happen. Um, okay. With, you know, maybe with Shaw in the dream. Um, okay. So, like, yeah. enter okay. into the, yes. uh, the fucking... You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, cool. How many uh, logos do you have left? I have one logos. Okay. 2d6 yeah. plus one. Please succeed. Okay. We all used up all our, all our snake eyes, it's fine. All of bad luck's already gone from this game. I'm not even worried. I'm not even worried, bro. I am worried. That's a seven. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me, guys? Why? <laughs> should have been so uh, Okay. Hold on. I'm trying to figure out... This is where I am stumped, because I... I really want you guys to succeed. Okay. Um, seven. Okay. This is actually per this is actually perfect right now. Um, here's what happens. Uh, you can you're gonna narrate this. Um, you're gonna see. You're gonna sh you're gonna see exactly what his death will take, but you're not gonna be able to make it happen yourself. Um, 
you see that Shaw has to die for the Sandman to go as well. That is what you see. He, right now, what you're seeing is like there's like a battle of terror happening right. in this in this dream as you witness Shaw in his form, not not as the Doctor, but his his avatar form, combating against the Sandman, and he is also in his avatar form. What you saw on the outside was a human illusion, essentially. What Shaw is fighting doesn't feel real. It's it's the sand is there, but it's the the ever present and changing form. There's no physical body to attack, uh, and right. it's all it's psychological between Shaw and the Sandman. And you, it's it's even though you can't see emotions, you can see these like these threads essentially that represent the pull and resistance okay. of of Sandman fighting against Shaw. So I think when I like So what you yeah, you mentioned that I couldn't make this happen. Um You can act in this dream. You can't do anything outwardly right. to affect Yeah. I think it goes back to the like the war scene. Um that like we're in this dream because it's Shaw's dream. And um like I see the two of them like caught in a in a like very literal fight and they're on the battlefield. Uh kind of like caught uh in like hand to hand combat. And like it the simile to in Shaw's dream how Gibbs was dying. Like I'm in this dream, I am in my body and like my legs have been blown off or something like that and I can't get towards him. So I can see them but I can't uh I can't help him. Uh, and I'm like, it's, it's like a nightmare where like I'm crawling towards him, but you never get any closer um, because I'm in that, that kind of fear nightmare for sure. Uh, yeah, and I think that's all Gibbs is, is like able to do at that point. Okay, I'm gonna give you an opportunity. You know, since you know Shaw has to die, you have one opportunity. You have your weapon in here. Do you want to take the opportunity? Yeah, it's to fucking like Sean Call of Duty dream. four right now, and I've, I'm like bleeding out <laughs> on the floor, and I've got a fucking like yeah, yes. I see the revolver, you know, and I like grasp it in my uh, hands, and with a yeah, with a tear in his eyes, he's like on the ground, pointed towards the two of them. And he's gonna shoot Dr. Shaw in the head. Okay. Because he knows that he has to okay. die. No roll required. So the the shot goes off. Um Sorry, straight Doc. to the side of the head. Uh as as Shaw stands there for just a second as the, the bullet penetrates his the side of his head. And he drops to his knees. And for a moment, you think something bad happened, like the Sandman is still standing, but then at the same time, you see the threads start to be pulled away, like they are snapping, uh, and the Sandman's sand stops moving and falls to the ground, and as everything else starts to kind of close around you, it becomes darker and darker and darker. On the outside, the dragon has left, because he's like, fuck this shit, I'm out of here. Pedro's still doing nothing, being useless as she predicted. And... <laughs> and may, may I flavor Shaw's death a little? Uh, absolutely. Please do. All, I, all, I, all I'd like to do is, is, I was like, blocking all the dreams of everyone who was sleeping. Uh, I was blocking it by holding over them some terrible nightmare that would fall. You know, I, you know, tending to be that protector and blocking everything. So I'd like to take everyone who was sleeping with me. Okay. Well, who who do you think that is? Like, how many people? Uh, all the people at the tavern for a start off. Um, 
people in this building. Most of the rifts. I want to try and take out the rifts. That was like what. That's what Shaw misunderstood Gibbs and his original intent to be to get rid of the rifts. So let's right. let's do that. <laughs> okay. So we'll say about two dozen people then. Yeah. That'll, that'll okay. Be fine. Fantastic. So, pan camera, uh, kind of seen here as Shaw lays on the ground. A bullet wound in his head, even though it happened somewhere else. And out of seemingly nowhere, a man steps out of the elevator and walks very calmly and slowly over to Dr. Shaw's body as he takes in the events that unfolded. And he looks down and he says, not yet. And you see as Anatoly leans down and puts his hand on your shoulder. And he says, your soul is still mine. And Shaw, you for a moment feel the echo of this voice as you are pulled from what you thought you could see as possibly hell just in time to be brought back into your body and you sit kind of against the wall where Anatoly has leaned you and as he's brushing off the dust on your suit you have no longer an avatar form but you look up and you open your eyes and he's there smiling with his little grin and he says so I'm Hades nice to really meet you and that's where we end the season. Oh, shit. <laughs> Spice and meatball. Oh, <laughs> oh, Hades. Oh, Hades, please. Hades, why? Hades, no. Ah, oh, well. Rick. Good. Goodness gracious me. That was exciting. <sighs> that was the finale, ladies and gentlemen. Holy shit. Wow. Um, yeah, that's, that's where we're ending the Larkspur sequence right there. That is the finale. Um, and holy shit, what a finale that was. Um, man. Woo! We need some time to decompress on that one. If you guys enjoyed yeah. the show, let us know. If you haven't checked out City of Mist yet, then, then what are you doing, my friends? Because you could be having moments such as these uh, in your own games. I'll link you guys to the website, City of Mist. Dot co they sponsored the whole season on the show and fun the exciting news is that we've got a new season of city of mist which was just announced this morning actually i think or maybe it was yesterday i don't keep track of days anymore uh the king's hustle of metamancer uh, which will be thursdays at 8 p.m starting uh, september 6th i believe so um there's the uh, announcement poster for you guys so there's more city of mist going on the channel but holy mackerel what a what a season this has been what a show this has been tonight um man Let's go around the cast and crew. Did we enjoy ourselves? Where can we find you guys online? Metaman, sir. Holy moly. Explain yourself. <laughs> I didn't expect you guys all to suck at your freaking ultimates, okay? Um, but it was it was good because it was it was like sad because everybody sacrificed themselves in an essence for each other. Um, so other than Faust, he was kind of a dick, but whatever. <laughs> um, you know, Gibbs sacrificed his his friendship, even though he was almost betrayed, and in other ways betrayed by Shaw multiple times. He he knew it, he was hurting himself as much as he was killing Shaw because that's something he didn't he didn't want to do. But if that was the only way to stop what could have killed you know hundreds of thousands of people, that was. It was nice to see you take that path. Um, as far as Lena is concerned, let's just say I don't think that was the last of her. I think that though she lost her humanity and she lost that physical attachment, her rift is still there. Um, her mythos is still there. Um, if you guys didn't figure out, I'll let you guys reveal who your mythoses are if you want. 
you do not have to, but I will let you know if we haven't already discussed it live stream. Um, but I don't think she's, I don't think she's down for the count entirely, even if it's not just Lena anymore, but her other part of her is not down for the count for sure. Uh, she, you, interesting choices, interesting choices. Um, <laughs> you threw me for Sorry, a loop. Dude. I really did not expect you to do that. Um, at all, but very cool. I have fucked with Tommy's character so much this season <laughs> in so many, so nice. many personal ways to his character, not to Tommy specifically, but to Shiyu. Uh, and it has been a world of fun because the reactions I get from him are gold. <laughs> oh, they're gold. Um, I. Shaw's character was so much fun. You gave me so much to go off of for this finale. I've been planning your resurrection since you made the deal with Anatoly. Like, I... <laughs> since that moment, I was like, yes, I know what I got to do. Uh, so that was, that was really fun to bring that into fruition. And I loved that. I love that this game lets you move manipulation of narrative over unnecessary dice and, and all that and like i hope you guys feel like the decisions we made were appropriate um if you didn't then you can complain to me privately afterward <laughs> but yeah you guys can find me on twitter at the metamancer that's where all my information is so thanks for tuning into the larkspur sequence it was super fun writing this and seeing how you guys fuck things up and also succeed. <laughs> you guys succeeded a lot. <laughs> Sometimes. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Great stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's go around in reverse order. So, uh, Sheepy, your thoughts, my friend. Hey there, guys. I'm Sheepdog, uh, Sheepdog Gaming on YouTube. I really enjoyed this finale. I was worried that Faust was going to just make a deal with Mephistopheles and peace out and be like, just betray the group or just leave. And I'm glad he didn't, although it is unfortunate that I tied his existence to Mephistopheles when uh, Shaw killed Mephistopheles. I was like, ah, oh, well, okay, that's that, that, that happened. So yeah, it was it was a lot of fun, and I, I really enjoy the Sea of Mist. It's nice to have a game that's just a bit more uh, narrative, I guess. It's a lot of fun to play. Yeah, definitely. The system's been great for the kind of game that we've been playing as well, just like yeah. pulling bullshit each week. And the system really supports that kind of play. So, uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed that as well. Um, Anna, that's so Raven. Hey, it's Snake so Raven. Eyes. Snake Eyes Anna. It's a creature I can see. <laughs> or I can't see. <laughs> um, I had a great time. Right. This was um, an awesome story. And I did not expect the thing to be his dad, but kind of deep down, I was like, maybe the, her dad was something. I don't know. But you guys are all amazing to play with. Meta, great story. Good job, everybody. I'm gonna miss you. Good times. Good times. But meanwhile, you can find me crying uh, at this end on Twitter as Anabee Photo or on Twitch as Cyborg Pizza. And I'm also part of Wonder Quest, a Dungeons and Dragons type e actual play podcast. Uh, here in the Encounter Play, Encounter Play, Encounter Roleplay Network, and also on WebDM Thursdays, playing the D&D. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Anna. It's <laughs> been a pleasure. And Tommy, who's been for all about this season. Jeez. <laughs> this, this, man, this channel always finds some way to put my character really through the ringer. Like, I think all my characters on this channel always go through the ringer, whether it's because of the DM or because of chat, one way or the other. <laughs> um, oh man, that was that was great. Um, I am so glad that um, I got to play in this session, this, this season in the City of Mist. Um, it was so much fun um, getting to try out the system and meta, I forgive you for fucking with my poor sweet flower boy so much <laughs> um um i think this is probably honestly the appropriate end for she you because no matter what once this fight was over um 
to use avatar state would have gone away, which would have resulted in him disappearing at the very least for a long while. Um, so I think this is fairly appropriate. And um, oh god, that was that was the, that was a season. Um, yeah, but yeah, um, I just, you know, and I'd like to uh, thank Will for letting me be on here. I've been here for the last four seasons. I think this is my fourth season in the last year or so. Um, I'm going to be taking a break for a little while. I've got a big move coming up. Um, and But I am excited to announce that um, a, I am working on a podcast that's in production uh, called the Tabletop Explorer Society, which will be a learn-by-play um, podcast uh, exploring all the various... Um, RPG systems that are out there beyond just like Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and I think City of Mist has certainly been added to that list. Um, that is uh, ideally going to be premiering at the end of September. Um, follow me on Twitter and I will tweet out all the links for stuff when that is live. And again, thank you so much, everyone. I had so much fun this season. It was great. Awesome, dude. It's been great playing with you, as always, Tommy. Ah, uh, and Scrat, what an end. Well, I did not see that coming at all. I was fully sitting there like, you know what? Yeah, shot in the head. Gibbs did it. That so totally works. I I accept this. I'm going to take a lot of people out with me, but I accept this. Oh, great. I'm back. Now I have to live with the fact that I just killed a bunch of people and Gibbs is going to hate me. Um, whoops. <laughs> I was so excited to play this game. I am. Um, I think I, I'm. As soon as it was mentioned, I like fired so much information at, um, at Meta. I was so excited to generate these characters, and I'm so so pleased with how the season's gone. Your DMing's amazing. Um, planting seeds like that um, resurrection stuff so early on and holding on to it is a real skill. Um, thank you so much. Um, I feel I feel like there's um, a lot of like untold story. I think we could have had six sessions, uh, no, six hours a session, and still have not got through everything. Uh, for example, I feel like there was a whole load of stuff between like Lena and Shaw at the end there when they realized they have a link in the shadows. I was like, <gasps> oh, it was not meant to be. You it was know. Your friendship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I am I am Scraticus. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed this season. I thoroughly enjoyed this game. You guys should check out City of Mist. It's amazing. Uh, I am going full time streaming in September um, over from the Academy. There are some of my links in chat. Um, we're intending to make the channel a place for newbies and returning characters, um, where we can develop better role players put people through their first campaigns ready to move on to other channels and that sort of thing so check us out we're, we're worth a look thank you awesome thank you guys in the chat as well for uh for supporting the channel for supporting the whole season because um uh city miss is kind of a uh wackier one i guess or uh, more of an indie one compared to some of the uh you know the dnd 5e stuff like the channel has been uh, born and bred on so it's awesome to uh, see so many people enjoying locks per sequence commenting on YouTube being here each day in uh, Twitch chat for us and following the series of course if you miss any of the series go back on YouTube and you can watch it there so on a neat little playlist uh, I'll drop you guys a link um, and thank you guys again to City of Mist for sponsoring and supporting kind of roleplay we super appreciate it and we're looking forward to next season City of Mist is not yet finished, Madam Answer back in the MCC with a brand new cast and crew for some more Adventures Thursdays, 8pm, starting a new season in Counter Roleplay, which begins September 1st with our 48-hour roleplaying game stream. But my friends, until next time, try not to roll too many now ones, because we've already rolled all of them, I think, that you could possibly hope to roll in a session. Most of them from Anna. See you later, guys. Bye!